24 degrees at kickoff for this one. There's even a 30% chance of snow showers, just the way the natives like it in Boulder for this 12th meeting after Thanksgiving between Nebraska and Colorado. Nebraska will receive the opening kickoff. And for the first time since 2002, they're head to toe in white. Just a little bit of red trim. They don't normally break out the all whites, but they have for this one. Grigsby, number two. Keep an eye out for him. A 94-yard kickoff return last week, and here we go. And that's Grigsby. And he'll get it out to about the 25-26 yard line. And David, we are about to look at one of the hottest quarterbacks in the country in Joe Gans. Yeah, just getting into his third start. Took over for Sam Keller when Keller went down four weeks ago. He's been red hot. Two weeks ago in the Huskers' last game against Kansas State, threw for seven touchdowns, over 500 yards. He's got a lot of Rich Gannon in him, quarterback that took Bill Callahan's open Raiders team to the Super Bowl back in 2002. A 4 or 5 guy that can get outside the pocket, very accurate on the run. And they will go on the ground, though, with Lucky. He'll get it across to the 31-yard line pickup of five yards. Jordan Dizon, get used to that name. Butkus Award candidate. In fact, one of the three finalists in on the stop for Colorado. A lot of talk about bowl eligibility in this game. And it's very possible that Big 12 will have nine bowl-eligible teams and just eight slots. Someone will get left behind. Way too much time for Gans. The ball just flat dropped at the 37-yard line. Let's get to, well, you know, Joe Gans very versatile. He's a great talker, too. He brings us our Nebraska offense presented by Sports Authority. At tight end, we got number 86, Sean Hill, the best tight end with diabetes in the country. At receiver, we got Maurice Moe, the big show purify. Starting up front at offensive line, we got a couple of young guys, Jacob the Brain Hickman and Javario Big Work Burks. And by the way, the deal on Sean Hill is he is very happy that Joe Gans mentioned that because he would like to let everybody know that an athlete can perform at a high level with diabetes. And he has gone and spoken in the Lincoln area about that to some youth groups. 44 percent on third down conversions for the Huskers okay. and it's not going to happen this time. Looked like he was trying to get it to Sean Hill and he was well covered. Nebraska goes three and out. And Gantz didn't look very comfortable on the opening series there. Ball not coming off his hand very crisply and early morning start. Ball's a little bit hard a little bit slick. Not the accuracy we've seen from Joe Gans over the last three or four weeks. Now, what about throwing in this kind of weather? It's very cold right now in the mid-20s. Uh, the football usually has a little bit of a sheen on it. It's a little harder than normal. And I think, you know, you, when you start rotating those 16 balls in, you got to get them warm. This is McBride. And he won't get very far, maybe about three yards. But decent field position for Colorado. Well, Sports Authority presents our lineups for Colorado. We have a very special guest. We are in Boulder, after all, home of South Park and the home of Eric Cartman. Here's our offensive skill guys. Cody Hawkins is the quarterback, because he's the coach's son, so he can do whatever he wants. Hugh Charles is our top running back, and he weighs 190 pounds, just like me. The offensive line is led by senior tackle Tyler Columbus. He's really good at being offensive. He offends just about everyone, all the time. <laughs> that oh. takes the cake. He'll be back. He <laughs> wins the award this season. Best intro. <laughs> and they open up with a little trick play. Going the other way with it. That is Sprague. It's a first down and plenty more as he shoved out of bounds in Nebraska territory. The officials are going to say he was out at the 44-yard line. <laughs> You see so much Boise State in this Colorado Buffalo offense. Misdirection, wide receivers in motion, skilled position athletes on the outside getting runs. This is pure Dan Hawkins and a nice job by Sprague to get north-south up the sideline. Green knocked him out of the 41, but the official said he was out of the 44, so a gain of 18 for Colorado. I mentioned Tyler Columbus. He has played every snap this year at that left tackle position for the Buffalo. And he's really gotten better game after game, playing at a very high level in November. Play action to Charles. Got him 
man wide open down the field, and it's going to be caught at the 25. Inside the 10-yard line. Catch made by Hugh Charles, the tailback coming out of the backfield. David, I saw a receiver open at about the 15, and he went to the tailback, Charles, instead. It worked out pretty well. Well, he picked the tougher picture down the field, but this is a beautiful throw. Hugh Charles up the left sideline. And watch the placement. Wheel route. He puts this ball on a spot. And a pretty nice job by Charles, a, a tailback catching the ball with soft hands down the sideline. Two plays for Colorado to get down there in Nebraska, 11. Charles, the tailback. And not a whole lot going on there as we meet the Nebraska defense, presented by Bo Rood and presented by Sports Authority. Starting up front for the black shirt defense. At end, big sexy Zach Potter. Next at linebacker, holding down the middle, Corey, Pancakes McEwen, and finally, at safety, the greatest player to ever come out of Culbertson, Nebraska, Ben Eisen. They've gone 55 yards in just three plays, the Buffaloes have. After Nebraska's three and out. And it'll bring up third down. And eight, make it third down and seven. And I talk about warming up the footballs. You got to give those those balls have been sitting out for a while during the pregame, and it takes a little while, a little handling by the centers and the quarterbacks, wide receivers, skill athletes. And then those balls start lightening up a little bit, pebbled leather. It's been kind of a tough football to handle early in this football game. that time by Nebraska fans want interference. I'm not even sure that pass was going to be catchable. So the black shirts stiffened just a little bit. Coverage that time by Anthony Blue. Cody Hawkins trying to hit his receiver in the back of the end zone and I thought that was timed up pretty well. And it was catchable. I was wrong in the, in the initial look at it. That was pretty good defense. So on is Kevin Eberhardt, senior from Broomfield, Colorado, 14 of 22 this year. Make it 15 of 23. So Colorado's first possession results in the first score of the game. We'll find out how Joe Gans and the Nebraska offense can respond. They're down early in Boulder. With Vince Welch and David Norrie, I'm Dave Lamont. Welcome and happy Thanksgiving again to everybody. First part of a doubleheader, ESPN and ABC, Texas, Texas A&M, the follow us. But there you go. Welcome to winter in Boulder, Colorado. A couple of days ago, David, it was in the 70s here. Not for us, of course. Uh, but before we got here. <laughs> one of the truly beautiful campuses, though, in the country. Really nice scene as we work into the holidays. And truly one of my favorites to visit. Well, it doesn't hurt to walk out of your hotel room and take a look at the Rocky Mountains. No, it doesn't. Except if it's 5:30, 6 a.m. in the morning, then okay. then you can't see the Rocky Mountains. This time it'll be Andre Jones. A little bit of a hole developing there, and some poor tackling by the Buff special teams. He gets out to the 33-34 yard line. So let's take a look at this rivalry presented by Sonic. It's odd to me how Nebraska has done so well here at Folsom Field. And of course, we're used to seeing this game today after Thanksgiving. You were in Lincoln a year ago. Well, it, Nebraska's had some pretty tough teams. If you go back to 95, really the inaugural game, Friday after Thanksgiving. And that was about the time that Tommy Frazier, Tommy Frazier, Lawrence Phillips were playing in the backfield for the Huskers. Those teams maybe one of the best of all time. Nebraska goes to the reverse of work for the Buffs. And it's working pretty well for Nebraska with France Hardy as he gets out of bounds at the 45-yard line. That will be a first down for the Cornhuskers after a 12-yard pickup. The 
Huskers so many weapons to choose from, especially the deep wide receiver core. Hardy, just flat out speed. Huskers deep threat guy that he can get the ball to over the top. Miami guy in this weather, huh? He's not happy. <laughs> Maybe he's happy carrying the ball. Loose. And lowered his shoulder to us, deliver a little bit of a blow as he's ridden out of bounds by Ryan Walters, which is playing a little bit nicked up today. He's questionable at the start of the game. That's going to be a 17 yard pickup. Now, the Cornhusker offense stresses you in so many ways. They've been playing lights out the last four weeks. Watch the fake by Gans. Nice sell by the quarterback. Picks up a pretty nice block on the perimeter. This offense is so well balanced. It's leveling Daniel Dykes to safety. Big block from the quarterback. First time we've seen the eye. Gans had a little trouble with the snap there. Taking a shot to the end zone. Terrence Nunn had his hands on the football and couldn't quite hang on. Yeah, nice play by Ryan Walters. The free safety who was back. He's missed some games with a concussion. Nice job of going up and playing the football against Nunn. And again, pretty good timing by a defensive back to break up the pass completion. has yet to hit a pass. He's had one drop and two other incompletes. He'll keep it this time. Good move to get to the hole. And a chance to get to the house. Touchdown, Nebraska. 28 yards. Second rushing touchdown of the year, and you count the 11 touchdown passes the last two weeks. He's responsible for 12 touchdowns now in two and a quarter games. Well, Joe Gans has been red hot throwing the football. Kansas State game, we mentioned seven touchdown passes, but he harkened back there to some of the great running quarterbacks we've seen at Nebraska over the years. Henry on for the PAT, hasn't missed all year. He's 41 for 41. A four-play, 67-yard drive capped off by Joe Gans' 28-yard touchdown run. It's your serve, Colorado. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Well, there was a bit of a rental car shortage, this being the holidays. Rental car shortage means uh, we got to get around someplace. So a lot of our crew members had the bicycle here from the Denver airport. We enjoyed the exercise. You see your score in time. So far, 12 plays, 127 yards and 10 points. No surprise given the tradition of these teams. And that's Hugh Charles running back the kick, number two, with Terrence Wheatley declared out for this game. He was a game time decision. They opted out. So Charles, the speedy tailback, has a chance right now. been a face mask there but no flag and you can see the tailback in him trying to find a hole that time he didn't look like a regular kick returner did he well great run you know you, you mentioned it right there Nebraska has the tradition of running quarterbacks could he be another one well, Joe Gans taking over for Sam Keller they've really featured his feet well he's been very elusive in the pocket he's been a dangerous weapon throwing the football on the run and as you see on that play a nice fake and Gans very dangerous on the planned running plays to the quarterback position and here is our X Factor presented by Citibank David I think that uh, you know the, the, the corn huskers are going to have to get the black shirts back on they're going to have to start playing defense like the teams that we've seen over the last four decades and then of course you know for Colorado they got to keep Gans in the pocket much there. Great play by Armando Murillo, the junior from Tampa. One of only two Cornhusker players to start all 11 games on defense. He came in from his corner position. Also helped out by Steve Octavian, the leading tackler for Nebraska this year. That's been well documented. The Nebraska 
virtually a nuclear meltdown over the last two months. They started showing real signs against USC, the way the Trojans controlled the ball on the ground, gave up over 600 yards to Missouri. Kansas posted more than 70 points against this defense. Really unheard of in Lincoln. A whole lot there as they go to Tyson DeVry, the senior from Hudsonville, Michigan. Well, the stats don't lie. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. 111th Nebraska in total defense in the country, giving up a little over 473 yards a game. We well, went into the Kansas game dead last in the country against the run. And then Kansas proceeded to post the more than 70 points on him in that game. And you know, if there is a silver lining, it's the way they played two weeks ago against Kansas State. Kansas State picking up a lot of yards on their last two drives when the game was not an issue. And Hawkins hit as he throws, and great job of hanging in by Hawkins as Colorado gets the first down. And they get it out to Josh Smith, a very promising freshman from California, gain of 12. Yeah, the Buffaloes really looked to upgrade during last offseason, especially at the wide receiver position. Not a lot of vertical threat. And Josh Smith is, is a guy who has come in the lineup as a freshman, averaging over 20 yards a catch, and he's given Cody Hawkins a nice threat down the field. His 22nd grab on the year. That was McEwen putting the pressure, but Hawkins did not wilt. The screen here just whipped it by Charles. Might not have been a bad idea to have that one incomplete, though, as it looked like the Huskers were all over it. Bo Rude was hanging around there. Cody Hawkins is a very heady player, and you'd expect that. I mean, he's been around the Boise State program, been around his father since he was just a young kid. And you know, he senses those intricacies. He senses when a screen is shut down and he has to unload the ball and live to fight another day. Daniel Sanders, the center, they call him girthy. I'd call him pretty speedy going down there, escorting Charles down to about the 16-yard line, a 41-yard gain. Well, this is a nice run by Charles, but if he cuts it up underneath Daniel Sanders right here, if he stays inside, I think he might take this all the way. And no doubt Charles has track star speed. And over the course of his career, the Buffalo coaching staffs have tried to get him to keep the ball north-south, not as much shake, east-west type running. And they go for a change of pace, bringing in Byron Ellis, very fast senior from Culver City, California. Picks up five on the play. This Colorado offense throws a lot at you. And they're a big game plan team. Dan Hawkins loves to scheme. You know, he says we we like to draw up plays in the sand each week. But they're very good at formationing. They're great at outnumbering you with their motion and their shifts. And they really attack you from all angles. Tough to draw a bead on this offense for a defense, especially a defense that's been struggling like Nebraska. Seventh play of the drive, and there they go on a handoff with Smith. Now he looked like he was going to throw, but the receiver was triple covered in the end zone. Good job by Nebraska to hold their assignments. And he is finally shoved out of bounds by the BN Zach Potter. Come stick around for more college football action up next on ABC. Rivals clash in the Lone Star State. Texas looks to keep it shot at the Big 12 title alive with a win against the tough Texas A&M squad. College football presented by Best Buy. Texas versus Texas A&M, part of rivalry week. Presented by Remington. Next on ABC, college football lives here. The Longhorns need to win that football game and hope that the Sooners lose tomorrow against Oklahoma State to get into the Big 12 title game. Good coverage here by Nebraska. But it's still the first down. What a job by Hawkins to get it underneath the coverage. DeVree makes the catch. You know, Colorado, David, has had a terrible time on third down this year. Only 32%. That's one of the worst in the nation. Well, they've gotten better after the big upset against Oklahoma. They've they've improved a bit with third down conversions. But Cody Hawkins sure doesn't look like a freshman. 
A lot of patience, a lot of poise, just buying time as he works towards the sideline, then boom, he lays it right on DeVray. Play action to Ellis to the end zone, a little high, incomplete, trying to get it to Smith. Second down and goal from the five. We expected offense, and we're off to a quick start with 10 points and not even seven full minutes of this game played yet. And Colorado looking like they'll get at least three here. And it's going to be interesting to see how Colorado reacted, even with the bye week off the, the loss to Iowa State, a game where they led 21 zip at halftime. The Buffs in the red zone this year, 28 to 36 coming into this game, 23 touchdowns. Charles. Nebraska closes up that door pretty quickly as there's Bo Rood, senior from Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm sure he had the wonder waking up today. Is this the last time he'll wear that N on that helmet and wear the white and the red? Now, Bo Rood has had a super career. As, of course, his father played at Nebraska. His brother Barrett's playing in the league. One of the rare bright spots for Nebraska along with Steve Octavian. The other outside linebacker. Brothers got him on total tackles up. How about dad lagging behind a little bit there? Yeah, needs to learn how to wrap up. Huh? <laughs> 1972, 74. Colorado oh. just now getting their 11th player on the field. That was Patrick Williams who was a little tardy for class. And Hawkins a missed tackle. He's in the end zone. What's been plaguing Nebraska this season? You got a good look at it right there. Well, the defensive front has not been very Nebraska like. Nice play by Cody Hawkins to break a tackle. Damacon Sue, the nose tackle, fanning inside. And Eberhardt perfect on 31 point after touchdowns. Hawkins' third rushing touchdown of the season has given the Buffaloes the lead back. I'm not sure that is available at the bookstore, that helmet. Let's go back and take a look at this touchdown, and we set it up. I think this kind of illustrates the frustrations of the Cornhuskers' D. Well, the frustrations of this defensive front that's been very subpar, and Dominican Sue just throwing an arm tackle out at Cody Hawkins. And Cody Hawkins only goes about 5'10", 190 pounds, and the, the Cornhuskers have not been very good, especially inside with their tackles this year. 11 plays, 74 yards, and 444. We already have over 200 total yards, David, in the first quarter for both teams. Short kick, and it's Grixby. And he got himself in jail and really didn't get the get out of jail free card. Well, let's bring in the third member of our team on the sidelines. We go to Vince Well. You know, four years ago, Frank Solich brought a Nebraska team here to Boulder, Colorado. The Huskers played well and beat the Buffaloes. But despite that outcome, the next day, Solich was fired with a 9-3 and three record. A similar fate may face Bill Callahan. Callahan will have a meeting with interim athletic director Tom Osborne tomorrow. And Callahan's future as Nebraska coach is expected to be decided. Will a win here today help his case only Osborne knows for sure when I asked Callahan about tomorrow's meeting he said he understand it's all part of the business but he's focused only on what he can control and that centers around the play of his Huskers today and he got a lucky on the ground to the Huskers gain of a couple of yards oh, Bill Callahan I, I think what, what, what's positive about his situation right now is number one the play of his offense especially under Joe Gans his offense showing a lot of promise but but also just as importantly I think with Tom Osborne Tom Osborne's not the type of guy Dave that's going to give you a knee jerk reaction he's not going to listen to the media or people locally in Lincoln and I, I think Tom Osborne's going to keep a level head and he's going to be very objective about the decision if there is one. Osborne will have that meeting, and I don't think he's going to. The interesting thing to me here, David, and we'll talk more about it this after this play, 
which won't be very much at all as Brad Jones came in and wrapped up lucky. The big issue here, if Nebraska goes to six and six, if they win this game and are invited to a bowl, what do you do if you're Tom Osborne regarding the coaching situation there? Well, I don't think that will necessarily you know, taint the decision one way or another. You know, that uh, I think it's going to be very important for Bill Callahan, number one, to win this game. And, and if he does win this game, I think that's a real positive, getting into a bowl game and perhaps picking up two more victories as Nebraska works into December. 44% third down conversions coming into the game for the Huskies. And we had a timeout called by Colorado. Interesting. Dan Hawkins didn't like something. Well, I don't know if you caught our representative for Colorado today doing the offensive lineups. In case you missed him, Sports Authority presents the defense for Colorado and Eric Cartman. The defensive front is led by George the Rabbit Goldfish Hippolyte. He's not really called the Rabbit Goldfish. I just made that up. Colorado has awesome linebackers, and Jordan Dizon is the latest. He's sure to win the Butt Kiss Award, because he's the biggest butt kisser I know. In the secondary, Wheatley has more interceptions than Boulder has hippies. And Boulder has a lot of hippies. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we have got to thank Trey Parker, Matt Stone, and the director of animation Eric Stow, and Comedy uh, Central. Uh, you may know that uh, Trey and Matt are CU alum, and so is Eric for that matter. Thank you guys very much. That was beautiful. Oh my. <laughs> Under pressure, diving, knocked down, and Colorado will force the first punt of the game from Nebraska. That was Chappelle Brown who knocked it down. And we're actually going to have a punt. Both teams moving the ball pretty well in November. Chappelle Brown with a nice effort laying out, almost coming up with the interception. Actually, this is the second for the Cornhuskers. It's Colorado that has not punted yet, and Gans is off to an 0 for 4 start, but he does have the rushing touchdown for Nebraska from 28 yards out. Look out there. McBride. A pretty good block over there. He'll get it in excellent field position for the Huskers. 48-yard punt, and Tyler Workman finally shoves him out of bounds. And a flag is down. That came in pretty late. Tom Walker is our official referee, I should say. Oh, that's just a sideline warning. That means the get back coach has to run the stadium steps tomorrow morning in Boulder. Well, Saturday night, national title hopes are on the line, and Heisman candidates lead their teams out of the field on ABC. Chase Daniel leads the Missouri Tigers up against Todd Reesing and the undefeated Kansas Jayhawks. The winner moves on to the Big 12 title game and possibly a chance to play for the national title. Saturday night football on ABC presented by Southwest Airlines, part of Rivalry Week, presented by Remington at 8 Eastern. College football lives here. Colorado off to their best starting field position. Quarterback's getting a lot of time, and that's completed to Scotty McKnight, a freshman receiver. 16-yard gain there. Well, I don't think a lot of people ever anticipated this game at the end of the year would mean so much, David. Well, and, and, and the winner of that game, regardless of whether they play Oklahoma or Texas, now the winner of that football game, if they can convert and win the Big 12 title game, I think the, the berth will be secured into the national title game. Uh, that's how big that game is going to be tomorrow. Ellis is the tailback for CU. He stays in the block and on the rollout of the completion. A couple of missed tackles again, and it's close to the marker, but looks like a little bit short. And Josh Smith makes the grab. Pick up of nine. 
Larry Asante, the second leading tackler for the Huskers, and that may say something because he's the strong safety. Never a good indication. That's Robinson. Charles back in the game, and he'll I think he's got that first down. Sue in on the stop for the Cornhuskers. Near the conclusion of today's game, we will select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. How much, David, do you think all of the Bill Callahan speculation weighs on the players? I don't think it's ever a positive situation when your coach's fate is hanging in the lurch, but you know, younger college athletes, pretty resilient. Charles, that popped wide open. Cut back for you, Charles. A first down inside the 10 to the 5. Maybe the 6, they'll call him down there. Grixby saves the touchdown for the moment. The gain of 19. Great work by the Colorado offensive line. They've established themselves early in this game. Playing a lot of football on the Nebraska side of the line of scrimmage. And Lee Charles doing a pretty nice job of hitting it up inside. 66 yards on six carries for Charles. Who has 10 career 100 yard rush games. He may get it by halftime. Get a chance here to get in the end zone and Nebraska stiffens. Well, for more on Hugh, Vince Welch, what do you got? Well, Hugh Charles came into this game with 820 yards rushing, and he'd missed three games or the better part of three games with a hamstring injury. If the coaches were looking for one thing from Charles this year, it was to be a more physical runner. They watched tape of Eric Bieniemy, Colorado's all-time rushing leader, and Coach uh, Dan Hawkins pleaded with him to run with passion. Be physical when you run the football and want to take the contact on, and Charles has certainly improved in that as the season has, wor has worked on. Yeah, he was trying to get rid of the image, David, that he was just a track guy, a guy who could only run fast. He wanted to show he could take some hits. And off pops open, touchdown for Colorado, Dusty Sprague. <laughs> Colorado brings wide receivers in these fly motions almost every other play. And they've used that motion as a decoy quite a bit here in the first quarter. Dan Hawkins, his offensive coach, is observing the reaction from the Nebraska defense, and then boom, he springs it on you, gives to Sprague for the touchdown. Great block by Samson Jagoras in the fullback spot. That's a six-play, 52-yard drive for Colorado. And the Buffaloes are thrilling the home folks in Boulder. Let's wait to find out how Nebraska responds. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Colorado's offense has been unstoppable so far, scoring in all three of their possessions. Nebraska has punted a couple of times, and Joe Gans hasn't hit a pass yet, although he does have a 28-yard run. With David Norrie and Vince Welch, I'm Dave Lamont. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Colorado already has, David, a 22 plays, 181 yards. That's a script that Nebraska fans are sick of. Yeah, they've done a great job of keeping the Cornhuskers off balance. Dan Hawkins' offenses have a way of doing that to you. Courtney Grigsby, boy, he got belted just outside the 20-yard line. You can see his head just sort of bouncing between the Colorado defenders, and that extra effort will draw a personal foul penalty. So tack on 15 for Nebraska here. Yeah, not very... Not a very smart play by the Colorado kickoff wow. coverage team. Kicking team, number 35, unnecessary roughness. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the run. First down. And at some point here, Tom Walker, they're booing so loud here. Well, at some point, you know, you're you're pulling the return man backwards. At some point, you got to pull off the tackle. Good call. That's by Amunga, who was right on top of him, among many others. He was not the only one. So instead of pretty good field position for the CU defense, you see where they are now. 
Castillo is into the tailback spot. Freshman from LaPorte, Texas. And now a double reverse for Nebraska. And Gans will lead the way on the blocks. Hardy again. He will not get the first down, but it seems as if anything you can do, I'll try to do better is the philosophy of these coaches right now in offense. Both offenses using a lot of end arounds. This is a double reverse. And not ever a bad idea to give the ball to France Hardy with the speed. Got a nice feel in space. Both defenses getting tested on the perimeter with wide receiver runs. How much would you have figured Nebraska would, didn't have any passing yards, would not have any passing yards near the end of the first quarter? Uh, I wouldn't have figured that, <laughs> but I don't think it's going to be long before Joe Gans gets it going. Lucky gets it going. He gets across midfield and gets it into the Colorado 47 yard line before Jordan Dizon makes the stop for the Buffalo. Well, we kind of ripped into the Nebraska defense. We ought to be able to pat their offense on the back. Well, 31, almost 32 points per game. And I think that says a lot about college football this year. Only ranked 36 in scoring offense, averaging close to 32 points a game. This hasn't been one of the more stellar years for defenses in the NCAA. And especially the Big 12. We were talking about that this morning. Three seconds to get it off. Trying to get those first passing yards. Lucky. Well, take care of the zero on your passing yards and a play very similar look to me, David, to what Colorado did with Charles early. Yeah, it looked, uh, it looked a lot like Cody Hawkins' throw on the wheel route to Hugh Charles early in the first quarter. And this was just as good a throw from Joe Gans. Uses his eyes down the center of the field to hold the defensive backfield and then just drops it right on Marlon Lucky. That's a tough matchup for safety there, too, I would think. And Marlon Lucky closing in on 70 catches from his tailback position on the year. That's 68 right there. And Nebraska goes to the eye. Lucky. Boy, nice stepping through the hole that time by Lucky. Vince? Marlon Lucky changed his number from 20 to number five this year, saying he hadn't put up the numbers worthy of wearing the number of former Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Rogers. He became much more mature in the offseason, stayed in Lincoln uh, all but a week during the offseason, worked in the weight room, worked on his work ethic. He was a five-star recruit when he came to Lincoln, said he didn't really handle the pressure put on him uh, by the fans and by himself as a five-star recruit, but he feels much better about himself and his game now. I think he's really happy with himself right now. <laughs> and at the moment, these teams are making it look easy. And he has picked up now exactly 1,000 yards on the season we have for Lucky. 50 yards. And the 29th. 28th in Nebraska history to reach that 1,000 yard mark in a season. <laughs> 31 points in the first quarter. I don't think you need to go anywhere. There's your score in time running out of first quarter and been a spectacular one if you love offense. Defensive coordinators for both sides have probably broken headsets already. Ellis and Charles back deep for the bus. And it's going to be Charles. You can just tell, though, there is a threat of him blowing one wide open with that speed he is. He just gets to that top speed so quickly. And he's one of the premier speed backs in the Big 12. And why not? have him receiving kickoffs. He's a guy, you get him out into space and uh, you can take the angle away from tacklers in a hurry. Nebraska's drive went 62 yards, five plays in 216. And lucky now, the only player in Nebraska history with a thousand career rushing and a thousand career receiving. Runs. Play is 
worked very well. They run it with Josh Smith and he shoved out of bounds. Still gives us time for one more play in this quarter. Well, and that's the Buffalo's fly motion. And Dan Hawkins goes to it again and again. And when Cody Hawkins goes ahead and gives the ball to the tailback up inside, they use that motion to hold the offside linebacker. The offside linebacker has to honor the wide receiver in motion. We saw in the Buffalo's last touchdown, they went ahead and gave the ball to Dusty Sprague, and he just walked it. A lot of motion back there. It winds up in the hands of Charles, and he is spun around and sat on by Bo Rude, and he had some help from Steve Octavian. Well, the boulder falls. They're a little bit frozen around here this time of the year. College football presented by Best Buy will return after this message. Watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Boulder, Colorado. We start the second quarter with David Norrie. I'm Dave Lamont. Vince Welch is on the field. It's been an exciting quarter to say the least. Colorado went through the first quarter without punting. At the moment, Nebraska has not been able to stop the Buffalo offense. Looking at third down and a couple of yards here. Make it three for the Bucks. <laughs> Haven't seen Hawkins roll left much, and that pass is just spiked to the ground as Sue got in there that time, got his hands up. So for the first time today, David, we will see a Colorado punt. Potter also putting some heat in there for the Huskers. Yeah, when we asked Bill Callahan on Wednesday, what has been the problem on defense? Why has this defense been gouged week in and week out? And he said it's really been the number one culprit, a lack of pass rush. And then Dominican Sue on that last play getting some pretty nice penetration into the backfield to get the deflection against Cody Hawkins. It's Nate Swift in formation for Nebraska. This time we've seen Matt Delalo, left footer. Boy, he crushed this. Nice job by Swift. Red to actually catch that backing up. Looked like a center fielder that time. Well, it's time for our Pacific Life game summary. We've got plenty to look at here, David. A lot of offense in the first quarter. Nebraska, you had to figure it. They've averaged over 500 yards, 45 points a game over the last three games. Gans ripping off a 28-yard touchdown run. And then Colorado answers. Quarterback draw, Cody Hawkins into the end zone. And the give to Dusty Spray, the senior wide receiver, to give the Buffs a 10-point lead at the top. Joe Gans' passing stats, not impressive. One of five for 39, but he does have that spectacular touchdown run. Only his third start this season. He took over for the injured Sam Keller. Knocked out him for the season in the loss to Texas. And that's Lucky, carrying a CU defender for six-yard pickup. And that was Maurice Lucas, the defensive end on the stop. That has to be scary for a defense. Seeing some zone read from Nebraska. Quarterback reading the end man on the line of scrimmage and either giving to the tailback or keeping, depending on how the defensive end plays it. And Bill Callahan has the luxury of running the football, springing some option on you, and then a very dangerous pass game. Joe Gans is, is equally as dangerous from the pocket as he is when he escapes and gets outside. Recognition by Gans that time. Terrence Nunn, the number two all time receiver, really took a blow. Only Johnny Rogers has caught more passes. That's a 25 yard gain, and it's one he's going to remember tomorrow morning. Well, this is a courageous catch by Nunn because he knew the safety was going to drop the ham. Joe Gans again showing that he can make throws from the pocket. Nice pocket movement, gets reset, delivers the ball. Pretty big hit. Looked Ryan like Ryan Walters. Walters. Yeah, it is. That's not surprising, given Walters' hitting capabilities. That's the fun stuff for the safeties, huh? Yeah, well, Walters is known for that. Walters will come up and smoke you if you're not careful. We hope to get none back into the game shortly. Underneath. And 
close but not quite the first down for Nebraska. Gain of about nine that time for Nate Swift. And Joe Gans, you have to really be impressed. When he got his opportunity, he took it. Sam Keller going down in the Texas game with the broken collarbone. And he talked to the offensive coordinator, Sean Watson. He is very, very excited about the way Joe Gans not only handled being number two, if you look at the quote there, being a team player, being unselfish, but handling being the number two in the fall through the first half of the season. And just goes underneath and gets uh, first down for Nebraska. Catch made by Maurice Purify. First catch of the game for him. Another one of the really dangerous receivers that the Cornhuskers have. Now you, re you really have the ability to spread it around with this group. This is one of the deepest groups of wide receivers in the country. And you know, getting back to Joe Gans, and a real tribute to him for, for a backup quarterback to get in. As we look at Maurice Purify's numbers, to get in this late in the season and to operate at this level of efficiency. He lost a very tight battle with Keller in August. And again, Purify picks up about seven. And we talked to the coaching staff about it, and he said that he really handled it very well. Better than they even could have hoped for. And he became that great teammate that you saw Sean Watson talk about. So he stayed ready. A lot of backups don't have that kind of maturity, but he clearly did. You know, we hear a lot of coaches talk about how close competitions are at quarterback, and sometimes it gets a bit cliche. They want to keep the backup quarterback in it mentally, and they make these quotes to the media. But but the Gans Keller competition truly was close, and I and I think we're seeing why it was so close in the way that Joe Gans is playing in November. And of course, the junior will be back next season. Goes for Purify. He got a hand on it. I couldn't believe he even got a hand on that. He played that about as well as you could play, but it's going to be third down for the Cornhuskers. And you always want to test defensive backfields with the size and the hands of a Mo Purify. Maurice Purify has hands that Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator, describes as competitive hands. He can go up, he's very strong, you know, big hands, and he, he's tremendous at going up and catching the ball in traffic or over the top. Well, you mentioned the size advantage. He has five inches on Gardner McKay there, purified at 6'4", and McKay 5'11". Nebraska's thrown the ball five straight times, make it six. Coming behind Lucky, and it sets up fourth down and three for the Huskers. Interesting to see here. Huskers may go on fourth down, this section of the field. Don't want to give up field position on a long missed field goal attempt. Well, Henry got to go here. Henry's longest kick, David, is under 40 yards. He's accurate on PATs. He has not missed the field goal, but he hasn't tried very many long ones. They're passing up on a 42-yard field goal on the year. They are 63% on fourth down. Two seconds to get it off. No, they can't do it. Delay a game. Play a game. Offense, five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. Now fourth and eight. Well, Joe Gans is a junior, but he's relatively young in terms of his quality playing time. And that was a young quarterback's mistake right there. You've got to keep your eyes trained on the play clock, especially in a situation when you're going for it on fourth and short. Now you're facing a fourth and eight. Five to snap it. CU brings the heat. Gans has got some room down the left. Instead, he'll throw it. And it's incomplete. I thought he had some room to run with that, David. He I did. Don't know if he would have made it or not. He really did. And Joe Gans made the decision to try the tough throw on the run. I thought he could have kept the ball. You're absolutely right, Dave Lamont. And we see his ability to escape the rush. Colorado bringing the blitz. And I think if he tucks it, He's going to pick up the first down. Peterson was the second receiver to get a chance at that one, and it looked like the first was none. But none is what they get, and it's going to be first down for the Buffaloes. Benjamin Bernie was occupied down the field. All Gans had to do was cut the ball up 
the field with some authority and I think he picks up the first down pretty easily. So so much for the drive which had reached eight plays. Again, he'll slip in for three. Full contact after the play. Bernie McEwen uh, among the tacklers for the Cornhuskers. Another fine linebacker. You know, it's funny. We we talked about the losses Nebraska had, David, but they return all their linebackers. Octavian, Rude, and McEwen, all all seniors, all good football players. The linebackers haven't been the problem at Nebraska. Even losing Stuart Bradley off last year's team. Nebraska lost their entire starting front four. A couple big impact players in Adam Carricker and Jay Moore. That front four has really been the problem. I've seen a lot of that wide receiver coming in motion. You see the elusiveness and the speed of Charles. Wow! To the 45, Octavian, the top tackler for the Huskers, finally stopped him after a gain of a dozen. Night football on ESPN continues next week as the Miami Dolphins take on Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers. How will Joey Porter perform against his former team in Heinz Field on the biggest night of football? Monday night football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern with Monday night countdown. And also, will Ricky Williams be on the field for the Dolphins on Monday night? Charles again. Much this time. Good job by Nebraska. Maybe no gain there. Rude and Octavian in there. Well, NFL fans will recognize some of these names, David, that Nebraska lost. Well, Carricker was a man child at defensive end. Went to the St. Louis Rams as the 13th pick in the first round. But guys like DeGundaro, Bradley playing linebacker in the middle, Barry Cryer, Jay Moore was an exceptional defensive end to compliment Carricker on the other side Shanley pretty solid safety in his own right and you know people just expect over the years over the decades for this Nebraska defense to reload 85 scholarships it just isn't that way anymore that's Armando Morello coming off the field for Nebraska we'll try to get a report on him when we return this is ESPN and ABC going to take a look at this Boulder campus Colorado Absolutely beautiful city, not far from Denver. And yes, we didn't import that snow. That came in a couple of days ago and may get some later today, although right now it looks very, very nice. Charles on second and ten. Make it third and about 12 is the Nebraska defense all over them there. Well, obviously, you're not going to win if your quarterback doesn't play well. So far, Cody Hawkins, good start. Well, statistically, the best freshman quarterback in the country. And I think he's going to have to overcome some arm strength problems as he gets deeper into his career, hits a couple nice balls, scores on the quarterback draw to complete a drive. But I think he's going to have to develop just a little more arm strength to threaten all the different spots on the field. He made a nice throw to Charles down the left sideline on the wheel route. Very efficient the way he works behind center. First time he's really gone third and that long before, and you couldn't really tell who the pass defender was and who the intended receiver was on that play. Josh Smith ended up playing defensive back on Armando Murillo, who did come back in the game after being shaken up, so we're happy to see him back. Well, Murillo played this ball perfectly. As a cornerback, you want to get your depth and a nice job of getting his eyes back to the football. He didn't look great doing it, but he held his position. Swift again in formation, receiving formation. He fair caught it last time after a good punt by the Lalo. This one not quite so pretty, but it's going to roll. Not very much. Got that side spin on there. So Nebraska will get it to the 26 yard line. Well, interesting stat. In the last 15 games of the series, David, going back to 1992, the team that has rushed for more yards has won the game. At the moment, Colorado has a 19-yard advantage. But that's not our Aflac trivia question. Oh, no. We've got another one for you. Here is the trivia question presented by Aflac. Aflac! We didn't have duck yesterday. We had turkey, a little ham. Jordan Dyson is a Butkus <laughs> Award finalist this season. You may have heard Eric Cartman refer to that. Two Buffaloes won the award in the 90s. 
Can you name it? I can. And that's without notes, folks. He got this one without notes. Out of the flat. They really hung on. Very good catch by Maurice Purify. But for more on Jordan Dyson, let's go down to Vince. What the coaches say they like most about Dyson, he's a high motor guy, 100 mile per hour, every single play, has great feet, covers lots of ground, and everyone respects him because he brings it every single down. You see, from Hawaii, went to the westernmost high school in the United States, loves the game of golf, in fact, won a golf tournament amongst the players earlier this summer, and deals with dehydration, gets an IV drip at halftime of every single game, and uh, coaches use phrases like real deal and whole package when they talk about Jordan Dizon, and he's proven it every game this season. And Nebraska will get the first down with Lucky and a little bit more. And there's Dizon right there to wrestle him down. Well, the interesting thing he was telling us, David, when we had a chance to chat with him, that one of the methods he tried to combat the dehydration was a combination of pickle juice and soy sauce. I'd skip that. I'd skip that remedy. Phew! <laughs> he said he didn't... Uh, he didn't really enjoy that uh, taking that <laughs> recipe too much. And you see Brian Cabral, who played a pretty good linebacker in his day here at Colorado. Dies on really the unknown amongst the three Buckus finalists. Of course, James Laurinaitis from Ohio State, Dan Connor at Penn State. And he and Cabral have a remarkable relationship. Cabral also from Hawaii. And it looked like the Gans was past the line of scrimmage when he threw that football. It's going to be incomplete. Dan Hawkins is down there, and I think he's got a right on this one. France Hardy was the intended receiver. It looked to from up here that he got past the line. Well, and once again, I think Joe Gans had the opportunity to just go ahead and keep the football. Doing a nice job of moving in the pocket, creating space. He's just behind the 40-yard line. I think this is a uh, that's really good no close. call. That's yep. good no call. We'll give that one to the officials on the field. Dan Hawkins has a different opinion on that. And on first down, go ahead and take six, eight yards. Uh, Gans might have even picked up a first down there. Has to remember, he's a four or five guy. Scored on that 28-yard run in the first quarter. Well, <laughs> he kept it that time. Didn't quite work out for him as Alonzo Barrett came in to stuff that play. Sets up third and long, a loss of four. Well, that was a planned run play there, and that was just well played by Barrett. And it looked like the zone read play, and I think Gans would have been better leaving this ball with Marlon Lucky. That was just a bad read on the zone read by Joe Gans, the quarterback. I'm guessing that Alabaster, Alabama isn't really like Boulder, Colorado. Think you with me on that? Yeah, but uh, a little bit warmer this Haven't, time of year. I've never been to Alabaster. I'm sure it's a great place. Nebraska, a lot of three on third downs. Not anymore. Purify showed his great hands, lost the ball, but looks like he may have gotten it back. And he did. Ryan Walters again in on the stop for Colorado, and that's a gain of 20 and a first down for the Huskers. I think Maurice Purify has a future on Sundays. He doesn't have blinding speed, but he's very competitive, good size, has to reach back and make that catch. That's a heck of a catch in 25-degree weather. Gans lays it in behind him. Not only strong hands to come up with the catch, but to get on the turf and cover the football. Four catches, 45 yards for Purify. McGann steps up in traffic. Second down coming up. Trying to hit Swift. Gans trying to fit the ball into a tight window. Joe Gans and learning on the fly. He's been so exceptional, such great production over the last three games. Needs to learn to get off covered receivers from time to time, come down to a second and maybe his third choice. Not a lot of room down the field. Gans had 528 yards of total offense last week against Kansas State. In two weeks of being the starter, he'd set a fistful of offensive records at Nebraska. Trying to fit this in here, and what a grab! Wow! That is Terrence Nunn! 
And that's also a tremendous throw, too. <laughs> well, Jordan dies on is absolutely velcroed to Terrence Nunn. And how about this throw? And the catch to lay out and for Nunn to reestablish his vision. I think he lost sight of the football until he flashed on the other side of Dizon. Great throw and catch. I don't know what Dizon could have done there, David. Not much more. That, you don't get better coverage from an outside linebacker down the field. Boy, all day for Gans here. Now he'll take off. And he avoided a big hit right there with that little slip because Dyson was going right at his neck and wound up tasting some shoulder pad instead. But a pretty good run that time by Gans. Well, Gans's skill set is very tough on the defense. And as he learns just how potent he can be from time to time to pull the football down and to make runs, I, I, I think he, he creates so many different threats because of his ability to throw the football so well. And then you have a guy that runs a about a 4 5 40 and a nice gift to make people miss ninth play of the drive lucky is the tailback and he sees that end zone and Gans has done it again his second rushing touchdown Wanted him to run more. You got it. Now you get the openings. You go ahead and take it, especially when you have the the running talent of a Joe Gans. And I think he's he's learning here in the first half. A couple times he decided to let the rows go down the field when he had a lot of space to operate in with his feet. Now he's going ahead and he's just taking those opportunities. It's a heck of a play. Henry continues his stretch of perfect point after touchdowns in Nebraska. Down early has come back to take the lead behind not just the arm but the legs of Joe Gans. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Well, I tell you what, there you see. The great Carol Shelby and in Boulder, believe it or not, which you don't always think of when you think of hot rod cars and the amazing muscle cars that Carol Shelby built. Some of the most legendary vehicles in the history of motors, period. We had to restrain Vince Welch when we showed some of this video earlier to him today. He was, he got very excited, but you talk about one of the most innovative and all time great power car designers. That guy could be number one. And what a wild first half this has been. And a couple of beauties lined up in the on the floor there. Oh, you have to take car. one of those out, huh? That's Hugh Charles. And he pops through the hole and gets to the 26-yard line. We have 468 combined yards in this first half, and I can't say that you're terribly surprised to see it. Well, Nebraska, we talked about it at the top. This team has been so good defensively over the years, and just the, the numbers have been shocking. I think it's been a a state of shock for the big red nation. Colorado, you know, they have different ways to threaten you, even without a lot of speed on the outside. Dan Hawkins with his son operating a quarterback. They're very, very nifty in the way that they can create mismatches with their motions and their shifts. And we've seen this play work several times with Sprague. And not going to be quite as spectacular, but still a solid gain of five yards on that play. So that motion play has been run several times already. Green on the stop for Nebraska. Well, it is time for the answer to our AFLAC trivia question. Jordan Dizon is a Butkus Award finalist this season. Two Buffaloes won the award in the 90s, and they are Alfred Williams and Matt Russell. Now, what do you think Dyson's chances are of winning against a pretty tough field. Uh, not very good. Not very good. But I think it's just a great tribute in itself that he would be a finalist and up rated with Dan Connor and James Laurinaitis. I think Connor wins it personally. Pierre Allen in there from his defensive end position for Nebraska to stuff Hugh Charles. He'll bring up third down and long loss of a couple on that one. Penn State has had a hammer lock on on the Butkus Award over the last few years. Of course, Paul Puzlesny winning two in a row, and Connor has a chance to make it a trifecta 
Laurinaitis, I wouldn't count him out. And that's pretty close, neck and neck, but I think the, the Buckus Award should go to one of those two Big Ten linebackers. I can explain for those who may not know, TFL stands for tackles for loss. Ellis in a tailback. Colorado's at half of their third downs. Less than half. And McEwen in on the stop that time, number 13 for Nebraska. So Colorado Nalala will have to punt. A nice series for the Big Red defense. And good job of keeping Colorado's spread game at bay. What you really have to try to do against this offense is win on first down because it takes away a lot of their fly motion with the wide receivers, takes them out of their base run game. If you're a defensive coordinator, you want to see Cody Hawkins in obvious passing situations. And a different look this time for Nebraska. Courtney Grixby is back in return formation. So is Andre Jones. They normally do the kickoff returns. They may not get a chance to return this one. Not a particularly good kick, and it will die at the 35-yard line. So we have a timeout. Nebraska has taken charge in Boulder at Folsom Field, up by four, and it's their ball. And watch the first of a big doubleheader here, ESPN and ABC. Texas, Texas A&M to follow. Oh, boy. That was a heck of a sign there. On the back end of on your Thanksgiving uh, dinner uh, comments. <laughs> Again, isolated. What a nice throw to Purify. That is a very hard throw. You know, what is he thankful for? Probably Maurice Purify, but a few other things as well. Thankful uh, from, you know, my family, my friends, and you know, I'm thankful for this opportunity to play football here at Nebraska, and I'm thankful for the coaches giving me a shot to play. It's an interesting thought. I'll run this one by you. Now, we don't know what's going to happen with Bill Callahan. No way of predicting. I mean, we can guess all we want, but we really don't know. you got a junior quarterback who can really throw the ball. I mean, the next coach has got to be ready to do you stick with this style of offense? Yeah, I, I think you have to. I mean, Joe Gans is displaying some great promise. For not only a potential bowl game, but into the 2008 season as we see the flags fly. It's ought to be a pass interference call against the Buffs. And Gardner McKay, who stepped in for Terrence Wheatley, Wheatley with a busted foot, and they thought he might be able to go today, but he is not. Pass interference, defense, number six. 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. First down. And again, Gans getting set in the pocket. Pretty nice protection. Ball was thrown behind, and I don't know about that call. Uh, I thought it was played pretty well. Oscars get a break. But you know, Joe Gans, uh, I think he needs to be thankful for a good offensive line. A very deep group of wide receivers. Marlon Lucky, probably the best receiving running back in the college game. A lot to be thankful for. Lucky stays in the block this time, and Gans will gun it a little behind the receiver, Swift. They'll bring up second down and ten. What makes this offense so tough is its balance. Marlon Lucky is as potent as a running back. Cody Glenn not being able to go full speed was his back mate, uh, back field mate coming into the season, but. The ability for this offense to threaten you down the football field and also to utilize Marlon Lucky in the run game and the pass game, it's a lot to handle. Lucky goes into the pattern this time and they look for him, but the pass thrown to a spot and Lucky was not in that spot, so it brings up third down and 10. Middle linebacker Jeff Smart step for step with Lucky that time. Well, when you think about it, Marlon Lucky bearing down on 70 catches on the season. He's a tremendous threat as a runner. And then, you know, that the wild card is Joe Gann's ability with his feet to throw the ball on the run, to pull the football down, as he's done several times here in the first half. And a linesman, head linesman, comes in and says Nebraska called timeout. That came for Bill Callahan. 
Nebraska. First team charge timeout. So they half. have two of them left. We'll find out what Bill Callahan didn't like and what he wants to do about it when we return third and ten facing Nebraska. Question about Jordan Dizon being a Butkus contender. He's a Butkus finalist. And right now they pumped up at Folsom. Third and ten. So they call the timeout, David, and then end up waving off the play. But it works to purify. Question is first down. Yes, he's got it. Well, of course, we talked at the top of the show. We mentioned already several times about the speculation regarding Bill Callahan, his meeting tomorrow with Tom Osborne in Lincoln, Nebraska. But, okay, the defense has been a little rugged, but the offensive show, the folks have had in Lincoln this year, has been spectacular. Well, I think that the offense gives this program a lot to look forward to. And, again, I think it's a, a light at the end of the tunnel for Bill Callahan. He, he talk, the talk has been so, so much centered around the defense and the struggles that this defense has had. But when you look at Joe Gans and – and all the things that this program can do offensively, and you look at the, the potential for next year, I think it might end up saving Bill Callahan's job. Purify breaks the tackle and will burst to the end zone. Touchdown, Cornhuskers. The Buffaloes blitz and they got burned. 25 yards. Purify his seventh touchdown catch of the season. Ninety six yards he has already seven catches. Another perfect PAT for Henry. Mo Purify showed the signs late last season down the stretch that he could be a dominant receiver. I think he's really come into his own. Big target. Gans able to put the ball right on the numbers. The key on that drive was the third down conversion on the stop route against press coverage up the sideline to Purify. And then Purify converts on the drive on the curl route. For more on Mo Purify, let's go down to the field with Vince Welch. Well, guys, Purify shining uh, despite a difficult season. He had some off-season run-ins with the law, was suspended for the first game. Then his brother was shot and killed while helping a stranger. A short while later, his girlfriend was killed in an automobile accident. It has been a very, very difficult season for Purify on a variety of fronts. But he says he's finishing the way he hoped he would. He's having an outstanding season, back-to-back 100-yard -back games coming into the this game today and he was terrific on that catch and run for the touchdown so purify says he wants to finish strong and he's certainly doing it today been a big second quarter that's a nice touchback that time by Kanalik. huge second quarter for the Cornhuskers now this is the largest lead they have had in this game five plays 66 yards 53 seconds well Cody Hawkins and his father have to be concerned about the way that Nebraska's moving the football at will. And this Colorado Buffalo's offense is designed to move the chains, to be productive on offense, but they're not necessarily in an explosive offense. They're not the type of team that can play from behind a lot. Of course, the Oklahoma game was evidence that this team could rally. Huge upset against the Sooners. Underneath they go to gear the tight end and he's close but not quite to the first down marker. Well Colorado's offense rolling along the first three drives the last three David they punted. No I think that Nebraska has gotten their feet underneath them on defense. They figured out some of the things that Dan Hawkins is trying to do to them scheme wise. You know as as Cody Hawkins gets older in this program I think he's going to be able 
to get the ball down the field. A big part of it has been their lack of talent and speed on the outside. That time they fake a little hot and underneath. Nice little play here. This is Robinson for Colorado showing speed. Another missed tackle by the Huskers in deep. And now a flag, too. On top of all that, as Asante may have grabbed a face mask. It's going to end up being 35 plus either 5 or 15 more. Stefan Robinson, the senior from nearby Denver. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number four. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. That's his longest play of the season. When the Buffaloes have gotten big plays in the passing game, oftentimes it's been short balls that have been advanced for bigger games. And, you know, the upgrading at the wide receiver position was a big issue. We see Asante grabbing the face mask at the end of the play. But guys like Stephon Robinson and Josh Smith have been an upgrade in terms of speed and talent on the outside. The problem is they're freshmen, and they're still learning. But a lot to look forward to for Cody Hawkins in the years ahead. Hawkins, freshman from behind, got it off in time. Pick up about five, maybe six to Patrick Williams. Hawkins now nine of 15 on the day. Coming up on the Capital One halftime report, John Saunders and Jesse Palmer will break down how last night's USC versus Arizona State game affects the Pac-10 and the BCS. We'll look ahead to tomorrow's Big 12 showdown between number four Missouri and number two Kansas and look back at 2007's bizarre and unusual year in college football. What did you think of SC last night? I think they looked dominant on defense and very apparent that John David Booty is back. You'll see them uh, next week, right? Absolutely. I'll see him. In and out of the hands of gear that time. We'll have USC UCLA, one of the great rivalries in the game next week. I think if USC is able to win that game, even if Oregon takes care of business and the Ducks get the Rose Bowl berth. Of course, the Ducks have to win next week against UCLA and then win the Civil War game against Oregon State. But even if Oregon wins out, I think USC is really a cinch, in my mind, to go to one of the three other BCS games. Maybe even the Fiestas, uh, the Fiesta Bowl, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. That would be a likely suspect. Colorado struggles on third downs this year, and this is going to be at the marker. It looks like it's going to be and is a first down for Kendrick Celestine, the wide receiver from Mamo, Louisiana. Gain of seven. Great story that uh, Dan Hawkins told about recruiting Celestine, pardon me, and said, you've never really been any place quite like Mamo, Louisiana. Couldn't find it at first. He had to get directions, and apparently it's quite the Cajun music capital in Louisiana. Now, Celestine has exceptional straight line speed, and He's the third of the two freshmen that complete that group, the upgrade, so to speak, along with Stephon Robinson and Josh Smith. And then you got Marcus Seamus, another two freshmen who is redshirted. So four talented young receivers for the Buffs. To the end zone, wide open, touchdown Colorado. Debris, nobody near him. For Tyson DeVray, the senior from Hudsonville, that's his sixth touchdown catch of the year. And a nice job. Colorado didn't even need to use their timeouts there. has displayed the ability to move his team quickly down the field in clock situations. Did a nice job of the last two drives of the Iowa State game, their last game, which was a couple of weeks ago before the bye week. Has a nice feel when time is a factor. And you sense that, that Cody Hawkins feels a little urgency. It's a little more snap on his balls, able to put couple extra revolutions on the football when he's under duress and the clock is a factor and that was a heck of a drive well executed by the young freshman six plays 80 yards in a minute and 39 seconds well we had an opportunity on a lot of our crew here of course all of our crew here got together for Thanksgiving in our hotel 
work with some incredibly talented, gifted, wonderful people. And if you're not going to be with your families on Thanksgiving, there's no other place you'd rather be with the folks who put on our football games. We're so grateful for them. And we had a nice little time the other night, last yeah, we night. Did. We did. I had to tell a few of them that there was, you know, there was going to be enough for everybody. Well, so go ahead and help yourself. That was about the only dessert last night I didn't sample right there. Otherwise, I did rather well. Boots kick. And drop. Look out behind. Looks like Nebraska recovered it. Tifa Tilda couldn't hang on and pop it out with the football. It looks like Andre Jones, who came up on the return. Now, Nebraska with two timeouts, a minute and 22 seconds to go. Gans with a hot hand all of a sudden after a very slow start. No reason to think Nebraska can't move the ball down the field. No, minute 22, plenty of time, two timeouts. Gans, Gans has something that Cody Hawkins doesn't, and that's a group of wide receivers that can stretch you horizontally and vertically. It's Nebraska offense a quick to go a long way in a short period of time. And they'll go to Lucky. Get some good blocks. Gets a first down before he is finally stopped. And carries defenders for an additional couple of yards. Ryan Walters, a good hitter among them. And of course, we'll stop the clock. Gans will get his team up to the line of scrimmage. Get them set. First down's the college game. Quarterback will wait for the referee behind him to, there it is, there's a whistle. He winds the clock and then you're on about your business. Wide open. Too much time. Neither of these defenses are known for sacking the quarterback. We haven't seen a sack today, and Colorado really has put very little pressure on Gans. Smart making the stop on purifying. Gans again throwing the ball beyond the chains. A great way to keep the clock stopped, whether you complete the ball or on an incompletion. And you see Gans can deliver the ball with different arm angles and platforms. He reminds me, as I said earlier, a lot of Rich Gannon, the Oakland Raiders quarterback that Bill Callahan had. That'll be incomplete. Brings up second down and 10. There's a flag down on the other end of the field from where the play was. I think this is going to be an illegal shift on Nebraska. I think you're right. Illegal shift. Offense number 16. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. That'll set up first down and 15. Mentioned the lack of sacks for these two defenses. Colorado with only 18 on the year. Nebraska with only 13 on the year. Kind of surprising when you look at how much pressure these defenses bring. And both defenses not afraid to blitz you and bring extra defenders. And Gans not afraid to run, not afraid to throw deep. Finds an open man, first down on the 15. The catch made by Todd Peterson. Juggled it just a little bit, but he hangs on. McKay on the stop. That's 31 more yards for the Huskers. That's a nice play by Peterson to extend. And Joe Gans is very good feeling the rush with his peripheral vision, stepping in and out of voids behind the line of scrimmage. And whenever he scrambles and moves to the perimeter, he keeps his eyes trained down the field. Gans started 0 for 4. He's picked it up since then. To the end zone. And a touchdown for Nebraska. Peterson survived a hard hit that shook up Walters, who's still down. And Toast Peterson will celebrate on his back for this one because he really took a hit, and Walters has been helped up and is walking off the field. It looked like initially he was the one that was in worse shape, but Peterson ended up taking a shot at the two yard line. A great effort to get into the end zone. A couple big kids. Todd Peterson, six foot four, about 210 pounds. Walters not able to get the helmet in front. These are some of the violent collisions that you see down the football field. And Walters, as we know, not afraid to stick his Nose in there. Not afraid to bring it. 
and hopefully both these players will be able to return to the game. How about the toughness by Peterson to yep. not only make the catch, secure the football, but to to wheel out of the tackle, wheel out of the hit by Walters, pick up the touchdown. What a play. We have the Cornhuskers for 274 passing yards. Gans has hit his last six for 113 and two touchdowns. Yeah, we were joking up here a little bit. Did Colorado score too quickly on their last drive? <laughs> Looks like they might have. Hey Vince, what do you have down there? Joe Gans going to the locker room a little bit early and uh, slapping high fives as he goes as you take a look at Peterson. But Gans has also taken a hard hit to the rib area, so they're going to assess that here, taking an extra moment uh, in the locker room here at halftime. Four plays, 71 yards in 59 seconds, and this Nebraska offense has had an enormous second quarter. That 0-1 game was an infamous game, depending on who you ask uh, in this series, when Colorado just beat Nebraska silly with 62 points. And Nebraska went on to play in the national title game. A lot of howling from folks across the country. And the howling will continue as long as we have a DCS system and not a playoff. You, know, the howling you can count on that. That year, the howling came from Oregon. Well, and this year, if you have a one-loss team like an LSU in the game, how can you say that LSU is better than an Ohio State or better than West Virginia? You can't. I mean, it's America. You got to play it. You got to have a playoff. You've got Charles trying to work his way through traffic. Can't do it. Gets it out to the 23-yard line. Nebraska, I mentioned the offense they've had in this quarter, 257 second-quarter yards. When you look at the Ohio State Buckeyes or... Uh, West Virginia Mountaineers. I mean, you can't say with any assuredness that they're a better or worse team than LSU. You look at Missouri, a one-loss team. You know, one thing that stands out to me, Kansas and Missouri, the schedule strength isn't quite the same as for an LSU or an Ohio State or even a West Virginia for that matter, but I don't think you can deny Kansas a berth in the national title game if they go undefeated. And if Missouri wins out, I think they have a great shot at getting in the game as well. And it looks like Colorado will just go ahead and take this deficit into the locker room at halftime. Well, under Bill Callahan, Nebraska has never won when trailing at the half. That's not going to be an issue here. And Vince Welch is going to catch up to the coach right now. Vince? Bill, you trailed by 10 in the first half. Now you go to the locker room up 11. What did your team do to get it turned around? I think that the core quarterback, Joe Gans, is playing terrific right now. Our receivers are on time, good rhythm, getting good protection. So we're in flow. So that's a good thing. Uh, defensively, at one point, you forced three straight fumbles per uh, punts by Colorado. What do you have to do defensively to limit them in the second half? I think their, their misdirection has been a real problem for us. You know, their ability off the fly motion and some of the plays that they have off of like the middle screen and some of the deep routes, those are the things we're going to have to shut down. Thanks, Coach. Dave? 668 combined yards, Vince. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. We'll come back in a little bit, but right now, let's go to our plenty warmer than where we are studios and join John Saunders and Jesse Palmer. In Boulder, Colorado, beautiful sight, beautiful part of the country. Not a beautiful score if you're rooting for the Buffalo Zone. Nebraska puts up 21 points in the second quarter, and David Norrie they appear to be unstoppable. What can Colorado do to slow down this explosive Cornhusker offense? Well, they have to create some pass rush. They haven't even gotten close to Joe Gans. Gans has been great with his feet, and they have not found a way to solve Maurice Purify down the football field. I think the pass rush has to find ways. They may have to take some risks, some gambles to get some extra defenders involved in the pass rush and get to Joe Gans, or else it's going to be a long day. They may hang 70 on the Buffaloes before this is all done. Well, you think about the ridiculous amount of Offense over a thousand yards in their last six quarters. Nebraska has put together. Meantime, offensively for Colorado, they're going to get the rock first. What can Cody Hawkins do here? Any better than he did in the first half? Well, I think Cody Hawkins is playing well, but he's, you know, there's a lot of pressure on you when Nebraska's scoring touchdowns on every drive. And Hugh Charles escaping. And just sort of ran out of field that time, but an excellent kickoff return by the Colorado tailback forced into service today with the injury to Terrence Wheatley as we look at our Pacific Life game summary. And both teams pretty even 
on the ground when you look at the numbers, but what really jumps out at you is more of the same for Nebraska. 270 yards through the air. Joe Cans with a couple touchdowns. I mean, he has looked great with his feet moving outside, keeping his eyes down the football field. He is really a gifted quarterback, and, and I think there's some great, great games ahead of him as he looks to a senior year next year. The freshman Hawkins and incomplete in and out of the hands of Celestine as we go to the third member of our team enjoying that mid 20 degree weather on the field Vince Welch. Dan Hawkins the uh, coach of Colorado 24 points is enough but they've given up 35 he said they've got to have better communication on defense that's been their biggest breakdown and they definitely miss Terrence Wheatley on the other side for Nebraska we told you before the half that uh, Joe Gans was going to the locker room early because of a rib injury I've talked to their medical staff they've rewrapped the uh, protective uh, the rib area and to give Gans more protection, but they said he should be fine. Second down and 10. Colorado has used that formation many times, gone with either with the receiver on the reverse or in this case, Charles straight ahead as Murillo makes the stop after a gain of almost five. And they, this game is so important for both teams in that I think you can almost guarantee a bowl berth with six wins for either Colorado or Nebraska. The way they play offensive football, they're, they're a very attractive outfit, either one of them, to get into a, a lower-level bowl game. And, of course, the Nebraska jerseys and helmets sell pretty well on, on television. So a lot to play for here in the second half. Colorado, four out of eight third downs in the first half. Hawkins has two seconds here. Breaking through, that should be a first down. McKnight did a nice job coming back to the quarterback that time. He broke off his pattern a little bit and was able to make the play. That was, that was a nice move at the top of the route. Had to use a physical move at the top of the route to gain separation. And he comes back short of the chains to make the catch. Knifes the ball, gets it north-south in a hurry, which you always want from your wide receivers. McKnight has had a pretty solid year. Top receiver for the buff. Colorado has never had a freshman lead the team in receiving. It looks like he's going to do it this year. Nebraska sent some blitz, and that was nearly a fatal mistake. Sue nearly had himself a gift. He was engaged with Columbus, it looked like, and ended up being the accidental receiver. Cody deposited the football right in Sue's breadbasket. I think big number 93 was surprised a bit here to find the ball in his midsection. Tough play to come up with when you're a defensive tackle playing inside, particularly when you have no idea that's coming either. No way. And a good solid tackle that time by Octavian. And Charles loses two yards. That's a third down and long. Steve Octavian is a high quality linebacker playing on the outside. Made a lot of big plays for Nebraska over the course of the year. Tremendous quickness. Nice burst. Very explosive linebacker. Six foot. Close to 240 pounds. Third down and 11. Still no sacks in this game and blanket coverage. The Colorado fans looking for a flag. And they're not going to get it. DeVray was the intended receiver. It's like Bowman was all over him here, but is it clean? Zach Bowman, I, I, I don't think it was clean. Got both hands around the hips. Really impeding DeVray's progress. That was a break for Nebraska. Courtney Grigsby has one kickoff return to his credit. Hasn't done a lot of punt returning for Nebraska. He did have a 48-yard punt return a couple of years ago. But somebody ran out of a shoe, and this is going to end up being an outstanding punt 
for Colorado. A piece of equipment fell out of the field, and Nebraska will have some very poor six yards. Well, Joe Gans came in, probably the hottest quarterback in the country, David, and after an 0-for-4 start, we see the numbers there. He has been spectacular. Even hotter than Reesing or Well, I don't know. Chase Daniel. Did they have 11 touchdowns in two games? How about Tim Tebow? And, and, and you're right. I mean, statistically, there really hasn't been a quarterback that's been as productive when you look at his numbers. I mean, he threw for seven touchdowns two weeks ago in the Cornhuskers' last game against Kansas State. He's been great spreading the ball around. Low purify, the primary target. And Gans has been very, very effective in the opportunities when he's pulled the football down and run with it. And all those wild, loud numbers you just saw there on your screen a moment ago, as smart as it on the stop there, all under the leadership of Joe Gans who took over following Sam Keller's loss. He was injured in the game against Texas, broken clavicle, knocking him out. Now, Dave, I know you were wandering around downstairs near the buffet at halftime, but I, I guess who I bumped into. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not you letting you get away cover. with that. No you way, man. My cover You're not that. getting away with that. I mean, come on. Anyway, <laughs> but anyway, I'm looking out there. They had a real emotional ceremony for Ralphie Ford. They're retiring Ralphie the Buffalo. I guess it would be a safe guess to, to say that Ralphie 5 is to follow, but. Lucky trying to pick out a hole there. He got a little bit, not much. Colorado's defense dies on in there again. You know, Ralphie, of course, this is much a part of college football as Boomer Sooner or anything else you can think of as far as a pregame ceremony. Uh, number four's last run. It was a great ride while it lasted. They tell me that uh, these Buffaloes usually live to be 20, maybe 25 years old if they're in the wild, but in captivity about 15 years is the, the average age or average lifespan. And I remember we used to come up here, UCLA teams, played up here a couple times in the 80s, and our teammates were real fond of uh, seeing Ralphie bearing down on them. Illegal substitution on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. Now it turns into a third and short into a third and long after that penalty on the Cornhuskers. No, but seriously, this, this is such a beautiful campus, and you're so close to all the ski areas and the great outdoor feeling that you have here, and you know, all the tradition with Ralphie. Well, it's a beautiful great part of the country. Stuff. Yeah, look at the Rocky Mountains there in the distance. With the flat irons behind us, flat iron mountain range. It's a Christmas card photo right there. I think I've ever talked to a student or a student athlete from Boulder that didn't just rave about their experience. And we have flags all over the place here, so this play won't count. Most likely this is going to back Nebraska up a few more. Delay game. Offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Bill Callahan thinks the clock management wasn't the very best. Vance hasn't done an exceptional job finding the play clock coming out of the huddle. Hey, Vince, can you add to that? Yeah, Bill Callahan was just uh, expressing to the official that he had actually asked for a timeout, so the play clock should not have started as quickly as it did, but they were not charged for the timeout. And I don't know if you folks can lip read. We apologize for the one word that slipped out, but the other two words were timeout. by Jimmy Smith, the freshman. That's a pretty solid play to pick his way down the sideline and cash it in for six. 31 yards on the return, and the way this game was going, a defensive touchdown was possibly the last thing we expected today. First turnover of the game leads to seven Colorado points. What a dramatic turnaround, and Nebraska will get the ball back, but they have been shaken. 
as the Buffaloes get the defensive touchdown by Smith. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. It was Black Friday this morning. Now, that's a good term because there are folks out before sunrise ready to start the Christmas shopping season. And there they go. Off getting uh, whatever they need for their family members, friends, loved ones, perhaps themselves. Now, we were also up at that hour, but we weren't shopping because of the 10 a.m. kickoff here in Boulder. And I tell you what, we don't need any caffeine to stay awake for this football game. I was showering, and I wasn't too happy about it. I'm happy you did, actually. Personally, I'm delighted. I mean, I know you got to get up and get ready for football games, but at 5.30, come on. This will be Andre Jones at the 10. This will be Andre Jones with a good run back of about 26 yards. And now it's time for our best buy playbook. Let's take a look back on the interception for the touchdown. And Maurice purifies on the outside. He's going to run a dig route, clearing route for Peterson. Go ahead and roll it, boys. And let's freeze it right here. You see here. That's going to be Walters, the safety. He's going to wall the inside. He's waiting for Purify, the collision. And Gans lets the ball sail on him. you got to get off covered receivers if you're going to play college quarterback. Gans should have moved on. Now, let me ask you, the weather being what it is, we're in the mid-20s. He started slowly in the first quarter. Could that be a, a product of just not being warmed up enough? No, I don't think so. I think he's still learning. This is his third start. And another interception, that one a deflection. Coming out with his Lionel Harris, and he's got a chance. Flag is down, there may have been a block in the back. Almost certainly going to be a penalty on the Buffs, but they will retain possession. Yeah, it's gonna be a hold on Maurice Lucas, a defensive end, or this ball could have gone During again return, for six. Holding, defense number 91, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Well, this one's on Joe Gans again. This is not going to be an accurate throw. He moves, he slides to his left. That was a poor throw, a misfire. The ball was delivered too far to the inside and high. And again, a nice play by a Buffalo defensive back. Lionel Harris making the play on the deflection. Maurice Lucas, number 91, the defensive end for the Buffs, getting called on the holding penalty. 14 interceptions for the Colorado defense, and you can sense a little surge in that Colorado offensive line for Charles as Octavian makes the stop. Joe Gans has not been as sharp coming out of the locker room in the second half as he was in the first half. I mean, that's an understatement. Two balls, two picks, and very close to two touchdowns for the Buffalo. What's funny is, David, it really is starting to reverse a bad trend. The third quarter has been awful for Colorado this year. Outscored 123 to 59 coming into the game, and they had turned the ball over seven times. Their turnover ratio in this quarter was minus five. Now that's down to minus three, and Charles has a first down. Intelligently using his blockers to find his way through, the senior from Keller, Texas, gets the first down after a 12-yard game. Buffalo's working with some momentum and you know for Joe Gans there's nothing wrong with pulling the football down and this pass rush for the Buffaloes has not getting, gotten even near him you know we're early in the third quarter he's had the ability to just dial up whatever he wants to do in the backfield pull it down and, and there's nothing wrong with saving the throw and getting the ball ahead for positive yards. Charles now over the 100 yard mark with 103, the 11th time in his career he has reached over 100. Seen this play work a lot for Colorado. Nice cutback that time by Sprague, and they get it inside the 10 yard line, a gain of eight. Vince Welch is on the field today. 
On the reverse. More in reference to Joe Ganser. Remember, we talked about his rib injury, but as he came off the field the last time, he said he was fine physically. And Coach Bill Callahan talked to him about the mistake he had made on the two passes that were both intercepted, but it was a very positive interaction between Callahan and Gans. A big pep talk at the end of that conversation, a smack on the behind, and said, we've got a long way to go. You'll be fine. Well, he might be fine physically, but he may be a little bit fragile emotionally after those two big turnovers. Quick hitter for Charles. Colorado's back in front. This is not the start we thought might happen in the third quarter. We figured there would be more offense, but one touchdown by Colorado's defense, and now Charles scores some nine yards out to take advantage of the turnover. 14 points off of turnovers for Colorado in this quarter. <laughs> so the resolve of the junior Joe Gans and the Nebraska offense will be tested when we come back to Folsom Field in Boulder. Now, winter wonderland in Boulder, Colorado, and a wonderful football game as Colorado has put up 14 unanswered points in this third quarter, set up by two interceptions against Joe Gans. Hugh Charles gets the touchdown, and Colorado made it look easy on that play with a quick hitter. Short kick. Joe Grigsby, rather, and almost brought down by the face mask, but apparently no flag there, so Nebraska will take over, Dave. Well, the Buffaloes use this fly motion with their wide receivers for a reason. Let's go ahead and freeze it right here. Dusty Sprague, the fly motion, and what it does, it, is, it influences and makes Tier Green, the safety, stay at home. Mayava, nice job pulling the left guard, getting it to, up into the gap. Hugh Charles ducking it inside for six. Funny, the control of this game has shifted so firmly. Very early it was Colorado. Second quarter was all Nebraska. And now it's all Colorado again. Back-to-back -back interceptions will do that for you. And not surprisingly, they go on the ground, the Cornhuskers do, but Lucky doesn't get a whole lot done. As smart as all over. First two attempts of the second half, Joe Gans lets a football sail on him. Looking for Maurice Purify, Jimmy Smith delivers the touchdown for Colorado. And then Lionel Harris off the deflection. And Hugh Charles is into the end zone. Already over 100 yards is Charles. Second down and 10 facing the junior from Palo Sites, Illinois. Quick throw and a good one. First down, Nebraska. And the strength of Maurice Purify that time. You saw him draggling tacklers, Vince Welch. And remember, as we reported just uh, at the beginning of the second half, that Dan Hawkins had told me as he came out uh, of the locker room, they had to be better in the secondary. Now, granted, maybe a couple of mistakes by Gans, but his Colorado secondary has definitely taken advantage of those situations, returning to one for the touchdown and then setting up points uh, on the other interception. So Hawkins' message in the locker room at halftime has paid off. And Vince, it's pretty tough on the secondary when you have a guy like Mo Purify. His size is such a factor on the field routes as well as the slants. They go to him again and that was nearly another interception. Lionel Harris was going one way. Bernie was on the coverage on Purify but Harris almost picked up his second interception of this quarter. Maurice Purify uses his size to get off press coverage. Colorado so much man to man probably more man to man than you'll see from any other big 12 defense. A heck of a play on the outside. It looked like uh, Benjamin Bernie breaking up the swing. How about that? Not even Johnny Rogers did that in Nebraska. What Purify has done so far. 123 on the day with nine catches. Different era. That's true. And flags down. It may have been the left guard Hickman who had the false start. False start. Offense number 67. Five-yard penalty. Feet second down. Well, they didn't throw the ball quite as much back oh. in the early 70s. Jerry Taggy was the quarterback. 
But Johnny Rogers, 55 receptions. In fact, that was uh, that, uh, that could last it for a while. Heisman Trophy winner. Right there, you're looking at a Butkus Award finalist and guys on. Likes to wear flip flops on campus here in Boulder, no matter what the temperature is. Defender fell down, and the ball was on the ground. Swift had a great chance there, at least to make it a little bit more of a manageable down coming up. Could not hang on, so it'll bring up third down and long. Stick around. We have more college football action up next on ABC. Rivals will clash at the Lone Star State as Texas looks to keep a shot at the Big 12 title alive with a win against a very tough Texas A&M squad. College football presented by Best Buy, Texas versus Texas A&M. Part of Rivalry Week presented by Remington. Next on ABC, college football lives here. And remember, the Aggies took care of the Longhorns last year. Big upset. Knocked Texas out of the Big 12 title picture. In this half, one out of five, 13 yards, and two interceptions. Got the foot down. Well, they say incomplete. Uh, that's what I thought. The official at first gave a confusing signal, but then made the complete signal for Terrence Nunn, but he is short of the first down. That was nice footwork by Terrence Nunn along the sideline to get the left foot down. At least create a decision for Bill Callahan. Watch your left foot. Wide receivers work in practice every week. They have drills. Typically, the wide receiver coach will get with them and throw a lot of balls working on the footwork along the sideline. McBride back deep, pitching to the punt. Another high snap. That's the second one, and it's blocked. Colorado with defense and special teams. The punt blocked by Barrett. Second one he's blocked this year. First punt against the Nebraska block. Second one by Barrett on the season. Now Barrett just came clean off the left side. And Nebraska appeared to be confused in terms of their responsibilities. Actually came up the middle. Yeah. Came off the right side of the center. Tremendous penetration. What a turnaround here in the second half. Nebraska led by 11 at halftime. Hawkins going for it all right there. And good defense by Bo Rude. Trying to hit the tight end. DeVray and Boot, Root, rather, was right with him. Barrett, she came free off the edge on the right side. And just a great job of extending. There's an art to that. Yeah, you notice that he didn't lay out straight at the punter. He came in from that side, so if he had missed, he wouldn't have gotten a penalty. People moving around on the field for Colorado. Ellis got the carry. A couple of yards now sets up a big third down for CU. You talk about a big turnaround, a change of momentum. Turnovers, special teams. You know, Dave, we sit in a lot of coaching meetings over the course of the year. Friday, sitting down with coordinators, head coaches like Dan Hawkins. And sometimes we get a little tired and, and frankly a little bored about hearing about the importance of special teams and turnovers, but but really those are areas where a game can turn on a dime. You can always go to Hawkins' blog if you want more information on the Colorado football website. There's some interesting reading there. Going for the end zone. What an adjustment in the air. Touchdown for Sprague. His third touchdown catch of the year. A Sprague running a seam route, and he victimizes Courtney Grixby. 
And Grixby had nice inside position. You got to credit Cody Hawkins for putting that ball outside and letting Sprague adjust. The play is being reviewed. And I think the only issue is to what came down first, the knee at the one yard line or the football in the end zone. You know, the question is not possession, it's whether Sprague actually broke the plane. But so. how about this throw by Hawkins? And there are times where you look at him and you say, you know, can he can he get the ball to all sectors of the field? I think that's a touchdown from that angle. It's probably a better angle right here. And that's going to be go ahead and keep it rolling, guys. Well, it has to be indisputable. I don't know if that's indisputable automatic. Oh, that looks like he didn't make it evidence. Yeah, that, uh, it's going to be a tough one to reverse from from either of those angles, but. You know, there are times where you watch Cody Hawkins, Dave, and you say, does he have the giddy up on the ball? Is he able to put the mustard on the football to attack all sectors of the football field? And then he'll make a throw like that one or the or the wheel route in the first half. You know, the, the deep ball, he hit up the sideline to Hugh Charles, and he fools you. He's a little sneaky from time to time with his arm strength. And I really believe as a young quarterback, as a redshirt freshman, you continue to develop that arm strength. He's so sound in his fundamentals with his feet, the intangibles. He's, he's one of the top quarterbacks I've seen all year. Anticipation, timing, all oh. those sorts of things. David, a couple of times you've talked about his arm strength and how it gets better. Do you do that in the offseason in the weight room? Are there certain exercises? I mean, how do you develop that? I think there are some things you can do in the weight room. There, you know, they use the bungees and those sorts of things. But also, I think it's it's just you throw a lot of balls in practice and you throw balls in the, the offseason. He reminds me a little bit. He's kind of the college version of a Chad Pennington. Mm. Yeah, you watch Chad Pennington operate for the New York Jets and the timing, the footwork, every, the anticipation, everything thing has to almost be perfect for him to get that review the ruling on the field is reversed the ball did not break the plane of the goal it'll be placed on the half yard line first down well one more time I think it was that second look that gave the officials the reason to overturn the play right there oh well, he's going to the going to the turf here and the ball's awfully close close the left knee is down and that is to me, that's a tough reversal. So, six goes off the board. I'm not sure I'd let that fall in the indisputable category. I'm kind of with you on that. That so happened so fast. It's very understandable why the official, the headlines, but would make that a touchdown call. Certainly can't blame him. Well, no problem. Touchdown for Charles. Not as spectacular. Same six points. And the Achilles seal for the Cornhuskers all season has been their defense. And it's happening again. Although, the Colorado defense has certainly had a hand in all of this because these have all been short drives. First time this year that Charles has scored twice in a game. This was quickly trying to determine blame here. Or maybe not quickly. <laughs> One of those non impact calls. <laughs> You'd think if it's on Nebraska, it certainly shouldn't have it. Offside, defense number 97 at the distance of the goal. Repeat the try. Although, with Dan Hawkins, move the ball halfway to the goal line, he's liable to go for two on. <laughs> made a decision last game two weeks ago against Iowa State and going for it on fourth down. And Call I disagreed with in the third quarter. Ooh, the PAT was hooked. Now mark that down in your books, kids. Colorado, instead of a 10 point advantage, it's only nine, but right now they have been nearly flawless thanks to the defense and special teams in the third quarter. With David Norrie and Vince Welch, I'm Dave Lamont. 20 unanswered points in this quarter for the Buffaloes. This is the kind of game it's been. If you're just joining us, don't leave now.
make that turkey sandwich and hurry back because it's been spectacular. And, you know, I kind of made a comment. I feel almost badly hanging out the Nebraska defense, David, but every drive for Colorado, two of them for touchdowns have started in Nebraska territory because of mistakes. And one of the Colorado scores, of course, was off of a interception. Now, all this issue, David, about bowl eligibility for Colorado may, may have been irrelevant had they managed the Iowa State game better and gotten a break. Well, they moved Eberhardt back to 55 yards. He had hit one from 50. The problem was they, they didn't have enough time on the first kick, and the ball was not spotted yet, and so the penalty came. They put one second back on the clock. And then the center didn't snap the ball in time. The clock was going to roll. And I really felt that Colorado mismanaged the end of that game. And even prior to the first kick, you know, Cody Hawkins had 17 seconds left, and they chose to try to get a three or four yard ball off. Receiver got tackled in bounds. Just poor use of the clock. And Nebraska rattled maybe just a little bit by the events of this quarter. Well, there's also a decision that they were up 21 0 Colorado with this game over Iowa State in Ames. And there was also a decision you weren't particularly fond of. Well, when you're up 21 0, as Dan Hawkins was in the third quarter, and you go for it on fourth and one from your own 43 yard line, you're on the road at Ames, Iowa. I mean, that was one of the most questionable calls I've seen mid game from a coach in a long, long time. It ignited a rally by Iowa State 24 unanswered points. I really thought in that situation Dan Hawkins let his team down. And Gans had somebody in his face that time. What a solid tackle that was. Well, not a surprise to see you did it. Dies on the stop. And a gain of six there on the catch by Lucky. There's no doubt Dan Hawkins is one of the true riverboat gamblers in the game, and he is well accomplished. You can't take anything away from him. Tremendous record at Boise State. He has a shot to get his team into a bowl game. A team where the, the talent level was, where the cupboard was bare. All in all, he has been one of the top, one of the top ten winningest coaches in college football as it stands. If he hangs on, he'll get number 100 in his eighth here at Colorado. Rejected on the pass. Might have been Dizon again. If it wasn't Dizon, it was Jeff Smart. Been a linebacker who got a hand up there. And Brandon Nicholas also was around there. So he could not get it through the wicket of the Colorado defense. And Hitchner comes back on the punt. But all of a sudden, the Nebraska offense, not anything like it was in that second quarter. And the Buffalo defense, you got to give them a lot of credit. They're firing on all cylinders. They've done some things in the secondary that have appeared to confuse Joe Gans. The safeties coming up with jumping routes. As punt was blocked, this one is crushed. The grind, though, has a little room to work. Flag down, flags everywhere. My goodness, and one official field judge threw his, and two more just jumped in for support following the 44 yard punt and a 12 yard return. During the return, illegal block in the back, return team number 45, 10 yard penalty, first down. Well, we welcome you to Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado for this Big 12 matchup. Twelfth time these teams have met the day after Thanksgiving. Nebraska and Colorado, a lot at stake. I'm Dave Lamont, along with David Norrie up here. Vince Welch in the 24-degree weather downstairs. And we mentioned what's at stake here. Winner becomes bowl eligible. And what Colorado has done in this quarter, defensive touchdown, another turnover by Nebraska, and a blocked punt. All of that leading to the Colorado outburst. They missed the point after touchdown, though, after the third touchdown in the quarter. And we have an official's timeout. Might have a clock issue here. And I'm afraid the outcome of this game is not only going to establish a bowl eligible team, but it might play into the meeting between Tom Osborne and Bill Callahan tomorrow. The officials had misspotted the football, and Dan Hawkins and his staff uh, for the Buffaloes alertly jumping all over that. And this can't help Bill Callahan's cause if the Huskers are not able to come back. Well, this time his defense at least had some decent field position, which they had not had any other time in this quarter. And Charles breaks one tackle. 
Looked like he was down to the 19, but he did not blow the whistle. He still got about two or three yards. Vince, what could be the case for Bill Callahan? Well, Callahan told us earlier in the week that uh, he believes that the four years he's had haven't been enough time considering the uh, significant transformation that his program has made. And when you look at the four years, 27 and 21, how about Bill McCartney in his first four years? Now, granted, McCartney did win a national title in his ninth season, but got off to a slow start through his first four seasons. And even Mike Krzyzewski, known as one of the greatest college basketball coaches of all time. And maybe Callahan needs a little more time. Maybe he won't be afforded the time. Well, I'll throw another one in there. Frank Beamer didn't exactly light it up at Virginia Tech right away, but they were patient with him. And now look at where they are. Well, and, and you know, the negative for Bill Callahan, there's, there's a real shock to the system when you look at the defensive performances. And granted, they've lost some key players off the defense, but when you give up over 600 yards to Missouri, you know, over 70 points to Kansas, Jamal Charles of the University of Texas runs wild on your defense, 290 yards. And those are all, those are all performances where you're saying, hey, this is not Nebraska football. Defensively, now this outfit might have put Bill Callahan's job at risk. Well, they've been running that particular play you call the fly motion with Sprague all the time, suing on the stop. Well, let's take a look back at the Nebraska coaching timeline most recent ones. Of course, they've had some legends there, Devaney and Osborne in particular. Frank Solich can do all that badly either, but was fired. And Bill Callahan, that's what he's done since he came with the Oakland Raiders. And there's the defensive problems that you mentioned that they really hurt. Allowing 40 plus points in five games a season last year. The Nebraska defense only had one game where they gave up 30 points or more. 30 points or more. I think the alarm bells were sounded when they barely beat Ball State and Lincoln. This will go back five yards to Colorado. I think that's when, it, just based on some of the stuff that I had read, that folks begin to go, mm -hmm. Ball this start. doesn't look right. Offense, number 77, five-yard penalty, still second down. Giving up 40 points when you're in Nebraska defense to Ball State, I mean, that's pretty close to heresy. And, and, and then you, I think the warning bells actually went off the week before when USC, oh, granted, yeah. that's a talented team, but USC, just dominated the Huskers on the ground. Moved the football at will in the running game. John David Booty didn't really even have to put the ball in the air. And I think the real heavy speculation on this staff, David, and I don't know if you agree or not, came with the loss at home to Oklahoma State. It was a big day in Lincoln. Ten-year anniversary of the championship team. Tom Osborne there. That's Charles. Look at the ability on the footwork there. He's going to get close to the first down. He's about three yards short of it. And Oklahoma State rarely wins in Lincoln. It was a big win for the Cowboys and just a bad day. And it seemed to me that that's when all the speculation about Bill Callahan and his future really got going. Well, and, and the question, I think, for Tom Osborne is he's going to look at the entire body of work. I'm sure that Tom Osborne is going to have a good feel for, you know, the... The, the intensity of this team, the enthusiasm as they get deep into November. You look at uh, some of the negative numbers in Nebraska football history. This defense stacks up with, with the worst of them. And if you go back four or five decades. And right around at the marker. Catch made by Celestine. <laughs> Be a first down for the Buffs. Looks like that pass might have been deflected. Nice job there by Celestine, not to let that confuse him. Nice little break for Dan Hawkins' offense. And boy, you see a lot of Boise State in the way this team plays, both before the snap and after the snap. And you also see the coaching with Cody Hawkins, the footwork, knowing where to go with the ball. Reminds me a lot of, of the Ryan Dinwiddies and the Jared Zabranskis that played out in Boise. Haven't seen the pass in this formation much, and it's open. Well, why not try the pass? DeVray is there. He was completely uncovered. And they penetrated the Nebraska territory again following a 29-yard game. And what the Buffaloes have done is they've established just enough of a running game to keep all the play action options open for Cody Hawkins. And when you have play action in this offense and your screen game is working, and that's really where Cody Hawkins wants to do his damage. He's done some nice work, Dave, utilizing the tight ends as well. Play action 
Charles. He looked to Celestine. Now goes to the end zone and almost intercepted. That's Green back there in coverage. Trying to get it to Josh Smith, but Green had him completely blanketed. Yeah, this ball was underthrown a bit, and Green had an opportunity here for a momentum-changing play. Good coverage. Nice job of getting the eyes back. Now, is this an issue of the arm strength you were talking about on a throw right there? Well, it, it's not only arm strength, and I don't mean to, to, to jump on Cody too hard, but I do think that will be his challenge, being able to get the ball to all the different spots on the field. But uh, timing was as much a factor on that on that last play. You got to get the ball up early. And Charles could not find anything there. And the Nebraska defense led by Corey McEwen putting the stop on him. Time permitting, I want you to stay tuned for the Dell postgame report with John Saunders and Jesse Palmer. We'll have a lot to talk about from this game and a lot to talk about on the games that are upcoming. Cody Hawkins, you, know, you don't have to have a hose to play the quarterback position. You don't have to have the big arm. That's been proven at the college and the pro level. I think he's got the toolbox to get it done in a big way at the college level if he continues to develop. We have had 833 total yards of offense, and we have one quarter to go. College football presented by Best Buy will return after this message. with that view. This is ESPN and ABC College Football presented by Best Buy. Fourth quarter about to begin here at Folsom Field in Boulder with David Norrie. I'm Dave Lamont. Vince Welch, third member of our team on the field. Been a wild game, truly back and forth. Colorado early. Nebraska led at the half, 35-24. Colorado hung 20 in a row on him. They face third and 10. Hawkins slings it open. Another first down. Smith on the catch. Now make that Celestine, number five, Celestine, not nine. And the wrestling match continues, but I think it's already been decided that Anthony Blue is not going to be the winner of that one. Now Nebraska has done a lot more blitzing this year than the defenses we're accustomed to seeing over the years in Lincoln. Colorado catches them in a blitz. Celestine, well, we've talked about the promising young true freshman. That's a nice route. And he geared down in the void. Gave Cody Hawkins a nice picture. They fake that play with Sprague that's been so successful. To the end zone, caught! Touchdown, Buffaloes! McKnight on the ground. Knight establishing the threat to the corner of the end zone. Didn't get a great effect on Armando Murillo. The accuracy of the ball was the difference from Cody Hawkins. Low into the outside. You've got to go back to September 18th, 2004, for the last time Colorado broke the 50 mark. But Nebraska does have an explosive offense. We'll see how they respond when we return. I can't think of any better way to explain statistically what has happened in this game and why Colorado has their largest lead, 16 points, than what you're looking at right there. 10 plays, 84 yards, 443 for the Buffs on that drive. And it just gets tougher and tougher for Joe Gans and this Cornhusker offense, which reminds me of a power hitter that's all of a sudden an 0 for 16 slump. Yeah, big slump. He scored 35 points in the first half. You moved the ball effortlessly. And then in the third quarter, only 40 yards, two interceptions, a block punt. See if Grigsby can make something happen. He returned one a couple of weeks ago, not even close, and a flag coming down behind the play. We'll get the penalty for you in a moment. We go to our New York studios and John Saunders, John. Well, we just want to remind everyone that coming up, it's Texas A&M against Texas. And those of you in the state of Texas and part of Louisiana, you will not miss any part of this game. Texas, of course, very much alive to get to the Big 12 championship game. Guys, back to you. And speaking of coaches who may be a little bit on the hot seat, Coach Fran at Texas A&M, certainly one of those. By the way, no penalty. The officials pick up the flag. What do you like in this game? 
I like the Longhorns in this game, and a lot of it has had to do with Franchoni and all the controversy swirling around that program. I don't necessarily like his chances of being around next year. There's going to be some fascinating movement in this offseason. Flags are going down with all the speculation about who's going to replace Lloyd Carr and what Les Miles may do and all these other things. Ball start. Offense, number 87, five-yard penalty, still first down. Already we read that Mike Singletary, you said, I don't want the Baylor job, not going back to his alma mater, says he wasn't even really contacted about it, doesn't want to be anyway. It's going to be an intriguing offseason. A lot of big coaching positions coming open. I think there are some stories that have yet to hit the radar that we're going to see as we get into December. On first and 15, Gans. Is he trying to throw that to the umpire or to Lucky? I think he made the right decision. Lucky was not down and gets the first down with a tremendous effort. Brown on the stop. It'll be interesting to see whether Marlon Lucky stays around for an additional year as a player. Well, that was he, is, he is that vertical. Excuse me, versatile. But he did get the ball vertical there. <laughs> that was so talented, Dave, as a, as a pass catcher. And these defenses in the college level and the pro level these days, they love to drop the linebackers deep. Lucky again. It looks so natural as a pass receiver. It reminds me a little bit. I remember the Miami days of Edger and James, who was so good coming out of the backfield of catching the catching the football. Made it look like it was never a problem for him. Edger and James, Warwick Dunn. You know, backs that have soft hands, the ability to get the ball upfield and take advantage of space. And you know, linebackers are taught to drop, to read eyes, and we've seen more and more at both levels, college and pro, deeper and deeper drops, and that makes guys like Marlon Lucky such dangerous weapons out of the backfield. Lucky has 153 total yards today and a touchdown. Gans on the read and Gans on the first down. If Nebraska's going to get back in this football game, Gans's feet are going to have to get in back into the back into the game and, and, and become a factor again, not only on the plan play calls to the quarterback, but in passing plays. Now there's some pictures, Dave, you've seen down the field that he hasn't liked and he's gone ahead and let the ball go. I think Joe Gans has to pull the football down in some of these passing situations and get things done with his legs. Colorado tried to stun to put some pressure on, but it did not work. It'll bring up second down. And Jordan, for more on the Butkus Award finalist, Jordan Dyson, let's go to Vince Welch. Well, and Dyson has been quick to point out that his development has been at the hands of Coach Brian Cabral, the uh, outstanding defensive coach for the Colorado Buffaloes, a Hawaii native himself, just as Dyson is. And <laughs> how about that get up, huh? He says Cabral has been his dad away from home, and he has made all the difference in the world for a player who had never played defense before he came to Colorado. Gans, nice job stepping up into the pocket, tried to fit that one through a tiny keyhole, and it's going to be third down and about three. Brian Cabral was born in the South but grew up in the Hawaiian Islands. That gives you a couple clues as to why he's donning that kind of garb in 23 degree weather. Doesn't seem to be bothered by it. He doesn't look cold. Of course, you're not cold when you're up by 16 points. You're cold if you're down 16. Let's see the numbers today for the Butkus Award finalist. It wasn't Cabral around the 85 Bears. I think he was. That would explain something also, too. That was a pretty whack, wacky bunch of football people. Passes behind. Almost intercepted, sets up Brown on the coverage. Here's an interesting call, David, at fourth and three. Oh, you got to go here. Yep, down 16 with 12 minutes to go. And, and, and when you know that you're in four down territory, I, I would have liked to have seen a, a run call. One of those read plays? Well, you know, 
no, nothing wrong with running the ball on third down, and it looks like Bill Callahan's going to punt the football away. There's plenty of time. You don't need to press the panic button, but down 16 points, I think you go on fourth and three, especially when you're averaging 45 points a game over the last three games. They have gone really cold in this half, failing to score high, high kick in this thin air. That is perfect. It's not possible to do that any better. 47 yards. Incredible. Let me come back. 99 and three quarters yards of offense is what Colorado will have to do to pan this lead. And that is the Colorado locker room. And uh, you got to keep up with the rest of the Big 12. You got to improve those facilities. I think they've done all right. I call it the arms race. The Brownstein family corral. Of course, the Brownstein family, true patrons of this program over the years, big time Buffalo supporters. What a nice locker facility they've created. And ironically, the arms race may have been started by the team they're playing today, Nebraska. Nebraska, the first one that I can think of anyway, David, that really sunk a lot of effort and a lot of money into their facilities. Well, we've seen it across the country from coast to coast. I mean, you go to the West Coast and you have the Oregon program. Phil Knight, the founder of Nike, and all the money that he's injected into the high-class facilities they have in the Ducks program. And then you go to the other side of the country, a program like the University of Connecticut, Randy Edsel and his team having so much success with facilities they've created. And the Nebraska defense had to Colorado pin back about as far as you can without it being a safety. And Colorado in two plays gets across the 15-yard line. Asante on the stop at 11-yard gain for Hugh Charles, who's well over 100 yards. And that's, that's another reason why I think on you know, fourth and three, Bill Callahan really had to think about going for it down 16. His defense has been spending a lot of time on the field in the second half, and Colorado, they're moving the ball so efficiently, you, you don't have a lot of time left you know, to work your offense onto the field and get Joe Gans and his group back on track. And he'll go to Charles again, got a nice block. And boy, you see the acceleration, put the ball down, and the officials claim that he is down. The officials say no fumble, but it's a nine-yard gain. Sue is the one who was in there for the Cornhuskers, but they claim no fumble. And they were the officials were rather emphatic about that. Let's see if they were right. Well, if they ruled this on the field and there was a whistle, this is not a reviewable play. Boy, that is a tough break for Nebraska because the ball was clearly coming loose. And officials have to hold on to their whistle in that situation. You know, the NFL has really gone to a, a, a policy where you wait out the play, you don't blow the quick whistle, and then you decide who has the football. The whistles came too quick on that play. Nebraska lost a turnover. And it's a first down for Colorado. Well, let's go back and let's eavesdrop on that last play. The whistle's going to come that late, then there's no need to call that play down. And I know they're trying to make the read on it and, and try to call it the way they see it. But, but if you're if you don't have a clean, clear look at that play, you got to let that play go. Uh, nothing fancy about the Buffalo approach now. He wants to stay in bounds, and he does. We go to New York and join John Saunders. With the Verizon Wireless update, Ole Miss facing Mississippi State. Mississippi State getting on the board here. Wesley Carroll, four yards to Anthony Dixon. They still have time left, looking for their seventh victory of the year, but they trail 14-7. LSU, Matt Flynn is struggling right now. Just two field goals in the game, but they're shutting out Arkansas. Six nothing is the score there. Back to you. All right, John, thank you very much. Hugh Charles with five there. His season high, 171. He's got 156. Most importantly, he's kept the clock running. And a little shy of the first down. Well, we see what LSU is up to. Let's take a look at our ESPNU All-State BCS standings review. 
Kansas-Missouri game is going to be huge in sorting out this BCS situation at the top. The West Virginia big game tomorrow on ABC, 3.30 Eastern time against UConn. That game will decide the Big East title and could decide one of the entrants into the big you know, title game, a national title game. I wonder how UConn is going to handle that Morgantown atmosphere because that's not a typical place to, to bring your team for a big game. That is such a hard place for a visiting team to get a win. This is another first down for CU. You now the crowd's going to be a real factor, and Tyler Lorenzen, the quarterback for UConn, has made such a name for himself. J.C. Transfer, who has taken such good care of the ball and really eliminated all mistakes offensively, he's going to have to have a spotless night if Connecticut has hopes to win that Big East title. Up 40 yards so far on this drive for Colorado, all on the ground, chewing up clock. time they go to Ellis and virtually nothing They've even lost a foot or two Steinkuhler in there of course that's a name that has Nebraska legacy written all over it his father won the Outland Trophy and the interior linemen including Ty Steinkuhler have not had a successful year and when you look at the Nebraska defensive problems it's not just the personnel it's not the loss of their entire front four guys like Stuart Bradley at the middle linebacker position off last year they haven't gotten off blocks you know they've missed their gap responsibilities they they have not played with the intensity that a black shirt defense is known for this has worked all too well for Colorado if you're a Nebraska person. This time they run it with Smith instead of Sprague. And it's going to be third down and short. Well, it was a lot of talk about the black shirts and what they don't represent right now. A lot of talk in College Station about Texas A&M coach Franz Future. Texas, boy, they've had some escapes. I was at the Oklahoma State game where Texas never led until the field goal went through the uprights and the clock read zero. They have been a fun team to watch. A&M, of course, that game means so much to the people in College Station. Their passion against Texas, pretty heavy. Texas, Texas A&M for years and years, just part of the great Thanksgiving week Quarterback tradition of college football. You can see Hawkins didn't make it. Well, one thing we talked about, Kevin Cosgrove, the defensive coordinator for Nebraska, he was very reluctant to address this. Took the black shirts away from practice. And he said, I really don't want to get into that with you. But that, was, that came out in the media, and that really said a lot. Now, based on today's performance, I don't think they're getting them back real soon. In Colorado, this is interesting. Dan Hawkins goes for it on fourth and one two weeks ago against Iowa State when he's up 21 nothing. He's thinking better of it here. This is a game where his team can become bowl eligible. He's up 16. This is a smart decision to go ahead and punt the ball away. Well, they moved the ball 49 yards, David, but they chewed up a lot of clock here. Yeah, I, well, this is a, uh, a drive that started underneath the shadow of their own goalpost. And they'll go ahead and burn some more time, take the delay of game penalty. Penalty, repeat fourth down. How much time did they take off? You see 509 on your TV screens. This drive started with 11.54 to go in the game. That is really good work. Yeah, there's, an, there's an old adage that you throw the ball to get ahead, and then you run the ball late to win the football game, to seal the victory. And I think the Buffaloes have done a pretty nice job sticking to that script here in the fourth quarter. Nebraska has their kickoff returners, both Grigsby and Jones back there, hoping one of those guys can pop something. And we have more flags and a false start. Going against Con I don't think they false wanted start. that penalty. <laughs> Offense, number 23, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. I understood the first penalty. I don't think they particularly were happy about this one. But for Nebraska and any football team, you're always thinking of ways you can win a football game. 5.09 left. You need two touchdowns, two two point conversions. Plenty of time for Joe Gans to get things going, but he's got to get a drive started. This is Grixby. 
A little bit of a hole there, and he'll get it out to the 34-yard line where Joe Gans will take over. Can he perform a miracle and get Nebraska a win and make the bowl eligible? Find out here shortly as right now the Buffs are trampling their opponents. Well, some Nebraska fans are a little frustrated. Their team had an 11-point halftime lead. You see where we are now. Nebraska held without a point in the second half. Not really sure who that was intended for. Looks like they were trying to get the lucky, and he got hung up as we bring you our Pacific Life game summary. This game has absolutely done a 180 on us. Nebraska, 35 points at half. And then the two picks early in the second half by the Buffaloes, both on poor throwing decisions by Joe Gans. Jump started a huge comeback by the Buffaloes. Gans has had cold streaks. He has had hot streaks right now. Dialing up a little bit on the cool side. And that's right at the marker to Hardy. Looks like it's going to be a first down for the Huskers. And Nebraska just has to worry about moving the chains. The way you can serve time in this situation is you don't take sacks. You don't throw the ball to receivers or back short of the chains. You got to throw the ball beyond the first down chains, Dave, because regardless of whether the ball is completed or not, the clock stays stopped. Incomplete. Trying to get it to Lucky. Brings up second down and 10. Well, the Buffaloes have taken Joe Gans out of his rhythm. You don't see this movement. You don't see him pulling the football down. You don't see him threatening this defense with his legs. And that has been the component that's been missing throughout the second half from Nebraska. Quick throw there on the slam. Purify intercepted and a chance to go. It's Brown with Gans in his way. Lucky in on the stop along with Jacob Hickman from the offensive line. But Colorado could put him away with two more yards. Third interception against Gans, a 52-yard return. First interception of the year for the sophomore from La Puente, California. Three-step passing game, the quick passing game, quick slant. Ball's delivered behind. Purify. Was not a front pack pocket placement of the football. Not a great play by Purify to make the deflection. And of course, Cody Hawkins has to be thrilled with not only his team today, the fact that he stepped up with the bowl assignment on the line potentially. And you can hear the noise that the Buffs fans want here is for Hugh Charles to get the football. He does. And he fights in. They're not booing, they're yelling Hugh. been 93 consecutive point after touchdowns made by Colorado kickers until Henry missed one spoiling his perfect season for PATs but we'll be happy to add one more onto his scoring total <laughs> Joe Gans throwing the ball behind Purify Accuracy a problem in the second half. Nice job by Chappelle Brown. And then Charles cashes it in. Buffalo's, Buffalo's got Joy in Boulder as Colorado. 34 unanswered points. Hugh Charles, first three touchdown game of the year. He's approaching a career high of over 170 yards. He's close to that. Colorado with 
some defense and some great special teams play, making Nebraska pay for every mistake. Pooch kick keeping it away from the dangerous returners that Nebraska has, but pretty good return by Tifa Tiller. Well, let's uh, give out our Chevrolet players of the game, and Maurice Purify has had a solid day for Nebraska. Cody Hawkins is the winner for Colorado. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Hawkins has had a steady hand in this game. Cody Hawkins has been extremely impressive this afternoon. And I just see him getting better from week to week. We see all the coaching in him, in his feet, the way he delivers the football, the anticipation. Dyson on top of Lucky, first down for Nebraska. This is the second highest scoring game in this rivalry. The highest was back in 2001, the 98 point combination. 62 36, Colorado won that game. This is going to break a two game win streak at Folsom for Nebraska. And whistles will kill the play. Ball start. Offense, number 72, five-yard penalty, still first down. Now, of course, the Big 12 has a little other issue going today, south of where we are. Texas and Texas A&M coming up very, very shortly on your ABC stations. And the Longhorns, a, a team that has pulled some incredible wins out to get to that number nine. And always A&M so tough against Texas. If the Longhorns can win that football game, even if Oklahoma wins tomorrow, and Oklahoma gains that spot in the Big 12 championship game, I think the Longhorns are a very attractive BCS team at large. Wide open there, that's swift. And the Colorado defense just sort of lost track of him for a moment. He gets down to the 30-yard line for first down. Well, I may make a mistake on this, but if they get to 10, Texas, I think that's going to be seven straight years for Mac Brown to win 10 in a row there in Texas. Yeah, he's done such a terrific job. And, of course, Mac Brown, one of the real true gentlemen in the game, one of the great recruiters, talent level so high year in and year out. Well, Swift really should have tried to get the ball out of bounds. You know, the, Nebraska trailing by quite a few points here, but boy, into traffic. Gans had a running lane open. Tried to squeeze that one in there. It was knocked away. Playing Lionel Harris, who has one of the interceptions for Colorado win this half, knocked it to the turf. A skill athlete, even when you're trailing by 23 points, you want to do everything you can to keep the football game alive. The ball out of bounds, getting the ball beyond the chain, stopping the clock. We have uh, one of those stat odysseys that makes the game so much fun. Exactly a thousand total yards before this snap. 516 for the Huskers, 484 for Colorado. Well, take a few off of there. First sack of the game. <laughs> Jones with the sack, his second of the season. This Colorado defense has played lights out in the second half. He shut out a Nebraska team that had been averaging 45 per game over the last three games. I'll tell you what, Dave, the Buffalo's offensive line was a real difference maker today. Really got to hang a star on their performance. Set the game clock at two minutes fifty-two seconds. Two fifty-two, please. <laughs> I think he said ten minutes fifty-two, and had to. And the crowd said no. You know, George, bearing down on four hours. We put any extra time back on that clock. Going for the end zone right here. Receiver was actually out of bounds for the moment. So had Hardy caught that, it wouldn't have counted. Good coverage that time by the Buffalo secondary. Sets up fourth down and 15. And possibly the last offensive play for Nebraska this season. They'll drop to five and seven. For the second time in Bill Callahan's four seasons, Nebraska will not be going to a bowl game. Two 
very successful seasons. Two bowl appearances, the 2005 Alamo, last year 10 wins, the 2006 Cotton Bowl. But nothing this year for the Huskies. They need 15, and they'll get it. So Nebraska's not finished yet. Holton on the catch for the Huskies. Is it a 24-yard game? Those are the kind of plays that we have not seen from the Nebraska offense in the second half. Gans being alive with his feet, moving, creating openings, throwing the ball with accuracy. Gans really kind of lost his way a bit early in the second half. Goes for the fade, knocked away, beautifully played by Jimmy Smith, who has the touchdown return for the interception. That was Gans's 50th pass. This defense really feeds off of Dan Hawkins' personality. You know, you just can't help but feel the enthusiasm and the passion for the game that Dan Hawkins has. And you know, this team has stood behind him. Might not be the most gifted team athletically, offense and defense that we'll see across the country. There are bright days ahead. Slant, Purify just dropped it. Pass might have been a touch behind him, and he almost took his helmet off the field, which would have been a personal foul penalty. Vince Welch, you had a chance to do a little conversation with Dan Hawkins. Well, I think one of the things in talking with Coach Hawkins about, the, as you guys talked about, the motivation, he said you got to bring it every day, and if he's going to ask his players to do that, he has to do that as a head coach and as the leader of their staff. And, he, you know, talks a lot about visualization and visualizing yourself being successful. Has the players visualized? And he says he does it as well and it helps him to become a better person and a better coach. Third and goal for the Huskers. We haven't seen Gans under center that often. To the end zone for Purify. Missed him. Fourth down and goal coming up. Maurice Purify had a dominant first half, but much like Joe Gans and much like this Husker defense, second half has not been a real glossy affair. You know, the ball was put on him, behind him in the back pocket on the interception by Chappelle Brown, but really a ball that Purify usually comes up with and dropped maybe what would have been a touchdown pass a couple plays ago. Same play, Purify.